What's up, everyone? It's your host, DJ Hamilton here at DJ Sports Show. If you're on YouTube, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and share anybody you know who loves sports. You listen to audio platforms I'm on, whether it's Spotify, Google, Apple. Share the platform with anybody you know who loves sports and spread the word. I'm here with Killer Cam. How you doing, my brother? My dog, my dog. Good to see yeah, you it's again, great, brother. It's, it's great good to, to see you, here, man. For sure. I know it's your first interview. You, you nervous? Nah, I'm chilling, bro. I feel, feel right at home. I'm used to the studio, bro. You know, I'll be, in, I mean, I'll be rapping and all that. You know how I get. Oh, really? Nah, I'm chatting, bro. I'll <laughs> be making stuff up. <laughs> uh, hey, before the show, you were talking about, mm -hmm. oh, you, you want to make music. I, I do want to make music, music, bro, for fun, bro. I'm going to get the homies in here. We go wild out one time. I'm telling you. Hey, if you do that, bro, I want to I get invited. I want to see that. Are you getting the stew? Oh, no, I don't make music. I'll watch. I'll bro, watch. you better get, you got to get in the booth. <laughs> you got to get in the way. booth. Hey, hey, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. All right, all right. Lock yeah. in, lock in. So, first question I always like to ask my guest, Cam, so people know where you're from and your yep, background. Yep. Where were you born and raised? Born and raised, bro. I was born in Harlem, New York. I was out there for a few years. Came out here in Spring Valley my whole entire life, bro. 845. That's pretty much it, bro. You know, I went to from Summit Park, Hillcrest, Pomona, Rampo High School. Played Juco over at RCC. Here I am. Product of my environment. Hey, that's great, man. How how would you describe growing up in Spring Valley? People who don't really are not familiar with the area. You know, I'm not I'm not about to be that dude to act like you know I was born in the slums, raised in the slums. But people people who's who's from out here, you know how it is. Spring Valley, it's it's an area. It's cool when it's cool, but it's not when it's not. You know what I'm saying? Just like anywhere else, everybody has their particular areas that you know everybody may not be comfortable going to. But it's cool. It was for me personally, it was a cool experience. I had a lot of friends out here. Everything was local. If I wanted to go to the Chinese spot. Yep. Go to the pizza spot if I want to yeah. link the homies. We was on the bikes all day, bro. So, you know, growing up in Spring Valley, it was cool. Everybody was close. I didn't really have a problem seeing my friends. Like, I didn't really have a problem doing whatever I wanted to do. But, you know, there's also times where I, you know what I mean? My mom and my brother was like, yo, be careful going out there. Ah, uh ah, -uh, somebody just got poked up. Somebody yeah. just got shot. Ah, uh ah. -uh. So, you know, it is what it is. You definitely sometimes don't know the difference between fireworks or... You know, yeah. the, the other thing, yeah, the hammers. Guns, gun, yeah, the gunshots, man. Sometimes, <laughs> you know what I'm it's cool, though. I know 4th of July, when I hear it, sometimes I'm a little hesitant, bro. I'll be like, all right, I, I don't hear anyone screaming. I, okay, it's good. It's yeah. a bad place, bro. It's yeah, cool. Yeah, any place, any place. When you place, just compare but, it to the towns, yeah. you know, neighboring it, it's like a different experience. But, you know, it's cool. It ain't, it ain't bad. Ain't it ain't crazy. Bad. Yeah. So, we know you love basketball, man. Oh, yeah. yeah we're going to get into your coaching later oh, on. Yeah, but oh, yeah. At what age did he start picking up a basketball, and when did he start falling in love with the game? Picked up a basketball, bro, as early as I can remember, bro. Three, four years old. I'm outside with my big brothers. I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in the crib with the little Fisher Price hoops, bro. Dunking on two feet, wilding out, bro. It's like, yep. I've, it's, it's basketball has been a part of my identity my entire life, bro. My, I've been in basketball league since I was like five, six years old, bro. So I fell in love with the game ever since. I, and I've never fallen out of love with it. That's, that's the one thing that brings me true, utter happiness, whether it's watching it, playing it. Yep. Coaching it, whatever the case may be. Hey, man, I'm the same way, yo. When I was five years old, I first picked up a basketball, but I didn't really start playing seriously until I was eight years old. So you remember Luma. Yeah, bro. I remember watching, you know, Allen Iverson, Kobe score 81. I'm like, oh, this is amazing. Seeing young LeBron, D Wade in the and finals. You know, but see, that's crazy. Though. I didn't really start watching NBA until like 2011. That was 11? Like, which is pretty late. Oh, wow. Mad late. I didn't really So you watched the, when Miami Heat Big Three that when, first when season. LeBron, uh, that's crazy. We got traded over to Miami. That's when I started watching NBA. I, I wasn't crazy. really concerned about it. I just wanted to play and get better. Yeah. I just wanted to be outside with my brother and my and his friends playing yeah. basketball. I didn't really wasn't concerned about whatever the pros was doing. Yeah. But Bro, I'm a basketball fanatic. I was always watching NBA grades, mm -hmm. history videos, and reading books on them. That's mm -hmm. how I know so much about NBA history. So I did from a young age, bro. The first time I really started watching basketball, I think it was the 2010 finals. Kobe beat the Celtics that year. Game seven. I definitely ESPN. go back and do my research. Yeah, bro. That's a good one. That was, I think that was the first year I really, truly, like, started to sit down. Okay, I'm watching this game. Like, oh, this is, yeah. I like, oh, yeah, I watched games before, but I wasn't watching consistently. Right. 2010, that year, that was the year I really, like, okay, I, I want to watch this. And you followed often. it. Like, you wanted yeah, to know what teams were what seeds, where stars the are championships. going. And LeBron, he had his decision that year. I remember going home that day after my RBA game. Mm -hmm. I said, Mom, hurry up. We got to go. LeBron's about to make his decision. RBA game? Bro, remember those days? That's when RBA was lit, though, bro. Yo, RBA was AAU before AAU, bro. Bro, tell me. Yo, you little kids, y'all don't know about RBA. Don't know RBA nothing. back in the day, they had competition. We was in it, bro. All the, all the star hoopers, you know, from That's out That's why I met Marcellus. RBA. That was the first year, 2010. I'm like, yo, this RBA. bulky kid. I'm skinny. He's moving me. I'm like, damn, bro. <laughs> 
Who's it's this tough, kid? Well, that boy tall. Yeah, bro. That and that's where tough. I first met uh, Isaiah. That's where I first met uh, Isaiah Charles, mm -hmm. Nick Boyd. And mm -hmm. I was like, man, bro, this comp out. I All like buckets, bro. RBA back then? I don't know if it still goes on nowadays. I hope it still does, but you know, I feel kids, like it's good for not just for, you know, yeah, get your basketball game better, but it's also good exercise, get out the house interact with people mm -hmm. all that stuff yeah but youth sports isn't i feel like what it used to be in, in, yeah. out here in our area yeah not, yeah, not in our area you know what i'm saying so not. it's like it's something for like you saw what they did to the baseball field east Rand little league baseball field they knocked it down yeah. it's all weeds and stuff every little kid played little league out here every crazy. kid so it's yeah. like it's crazy it's different now yeah like around me there's little league baseball fields like in Haverstraw. Mm -hmm. I, every every spring, I hear the, the parents going crazy for their kid. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I, I love hearing that. Especially when I'm going for a walk or exercising or hooping. I just love hearing that because I like to see kids going see, outside, getting active, playing in a team environment. Because nowadays, most kids, they just want to be on TikTok. And, on the iPads, bro. Yeah. On the iPads. Hey, my younger sister, bro. See, I'm the youngest. <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't be able to deal with that, bro. Hey, Good luck to you. Always on TikTok. Good luck to you. Yeah, man. So who are the players you idolize and model your game after? Who do our players I idolize? I idolize one player. And all the real homies know who I'm about to say. That is Kyrie Irving. I was, yo, I was about to say <laughs> that, bro. Bro, in middle school, I was like, yo, this guy has the shifty handles. Bro. He he has that confidence about him. We're going to get into that later because we're going to get into how when I first met you. But I knew you were going to say Kyrie, bro. Kyrie I Irving, just knew bro. it. When you said that, I said, I knew it, bro. It's, it's, it's ever since ever since 2011, bro. It's 2010, it's been Kyrie. His high school days, I followed bro, him everywhere. He was filthy. As, as of right now, I'm a Dallas Mavericks fan. Mm -hmm. If he goes somewhere else, I'll be a fan of that organization. <laughs> yep. Not playing. You know what's funny? Me and Lamont, that's how we connected in from the middle school. Mm -hmm. We used to have Miss Finkel math class, seventh mm -hmm. grade, bro. Used to talk about Kyrie Irving, bro. Like, yo, Kyrie, you saw Kyrie's bro. move last night. It's all Kyrie. Just in the 2013 I Stars Challenge when he crossed up Brandon mm -hmm. Knight, bro. We were like, yo, we were going crazy. Bro. Oh, bro. It's, it's, I try to model my game after him. It's harder now because I'm, I'm getting so much weight. I'm getting bigger. So it's like, yeah. I don't have the handle like I used to. But like, when it comes to going to the rack, like, I'm all that. Yeah, give yeah. me. I'm all I'm you on the knee guys. You have to take the contact and yeah. finish. So yeah. So it's like, I, you, you know. might have lost something, but you gain another thing. Yeah, that's yeah. fair. That's fair. You hey. know, I, I mean, if I'm, if I'm going to pick somebody that's not him, before him, it was Allen Iverson. So, I mean, I guess you can see you where like I'm... like the shifty guard. Yeah, like, yeah. I, got, I got a certain play style I like, a certain attitude That's I like. That's people. But, That's like, swag, yeah. nowadays, like, somebody wants to compare me to Jimmy Butler. So, I'm like... Hey, like a sort of Jimmy Butler? I can, I can yeah, see I kind of like that. You know, he's yeah. aggressive, he's strong, he plays on both sides of the ball. Yeah, so killer instinct. Oh, so, man. it's like, I kind of get that. Yep. Hey, like, man, I, I knew you were going to say Kyrie. Yeah, bro, you know me. <laughs> I knew he was going to say Kyrie, man. You know me. Who have been your biggest influences in your athletic slash fitness career? athletic and fitness career well number one i gotta say my brothers like you know like just growing up like my brother, shout out to them what's their name shout out to my brother dj shout out to big bro rob my, hey dj my hey. lifeline shout out to you dj from another dj <laughs> my <laughs> lifelines bro without them like i wouldn't even know about fitness and athleticism like just stuff like that like just watching my brother my oldest brother he's a marine yeah just watching him do push-ups in the crib just doing mm. pull-ups in the crib just real raw watching my middle brother just excel at sports all the time like it just made me want to be better than yep. them yep and you know i got there but you know they were definitely my biggest influences growing up you know um if i'm gonna say outside of them i definitely had to give kudos to my coaches you know shout out coach k boy he's a he was a coach now he's my colleague so he definitely gave me so much influence on what it's like to be a serious athlete what like what it takes to get the, the, the grit and the grind and i kind of just transferred that to to fitness you know what I'm saying? So it kind of just works out for that way. Shout out to my coaches. Shout out to my big brothers, man. Hey, shout out to y'all, man. That's Hey, he turned out pretty good. You know, I try my best, man. Turned out Thank pretty you. good. Thank you. <laughs> Did he play any other sports growing up outside of basketball that helped you with your game on the court? Absolutely. You know, like, I, like I said before, you know, Little League, I started off playing baseball real young. I didn't really love it. Then I got to high school, uh, freshman year, just finished JV season. I'm like, all right, cool. I get to relax. I'm yeah. chilling. The varsity baseball coach just... Um, the JV baseball coach just so happened to be the varsity basketball coach. So he's like, oh, you coming to tryouts? I'm like, for what? Like, baseball? I'm not about to play baseball. You dumb. Like, I'm a, I'm a hooper. Like, yeah. I, I hoop. Like, I'm not playing. I haven't played, touched the baseball since I was, like, in first grade. He's like, yeah, I'll see you at tryouts. So <laughs> my best friend, Dario, was like, bro, just come to tryouts. Yeah. Like, all right. So I went and bought a glove, a little $40 glove. Mm -hmm. Got in that gym. I tried out. I fell back in love with it. Baseball was fun. So, like, you know, I played baseball ninth, 10th, and 11th grade. What position were you? I played left field, center, and I pitched. And right. So it was outfield and I pitched. Damn, bro. So, yeah, that was Utility cool. weapon. 
Yeah, bro, that was cool. I was, I was all out there. I would call you Otani, bro. Yo, you know, I, yeah, I wish, I wish. He's like, if I was designated hitter, then yeah. Bro. I don't got, yeah, I, that's the thing though. I yeah, couldn't hit. Otani could hit. I couldn't hit for yeah. shit, bro. I could. <laughs> I, crazy. Yo, I played varsity baseball for two years, or a year and a half, two years. I got on base. I went to bat seven times. I probably got on base twice. That's crazy. I don't know what it was. I don't have the hand eye coordination. Yeah. I don't know, but I just could have hit a baseball. You're getting them RBI stats. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. But I was out there not making errors. I ain't dropping yeah. a single ball. You're getting the strikeouts though. Strike oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I only hit a couple yeah. guys, so <laughs> they alright. Hey man, that's great, yeah. man. So we met at Pomona Middle School back in 2013. I moved. So I remember I was in the middle of my seventh grade. I was moving from Highland Falls, Orange County, to Nyack, and I was going to. It was the middle of the school year, so I was in seventh grade. You were the grade above me. Mm -hmm. January 2013 is when I started going to Pomona. That's where I met you, Anthony, Simon, Malik, mm -hmm. Lamont, and et cetera. I remember first, describe your time there, and what was your initial thoughts when you first met me, if you remember? Describe my time in Pomona? Yeah. Pom yeah. Pomona yeah, there was, and when you first met me. When I first met you, bro, you you the same dude. You the same dude that you were when you were in seventh grade, bro. This cheesy dude, oh always God. in a good mood, bro, always bringing positive energy, bro, like... You know, when you first got there, I was just like, you used to look like this dude that I know. This dude oh, really? that one of my mans, Isaiah Fiend. So it's like, I used to be like, yo, you look just like one of my homies. So it's like, yeah. that's how I remembered you. That's how you stuck in my head. But like, you was always a positive energy to be around, bro. Like, whenever you came around, it's like, oh, that's DJ, bro. DJ cool. Like, yeah. there's no drama. You never wanted no yeah. beef. And I resonated with that. You know, I'm on the same type of time. I don't like drama. I don't yeah. like beef. You lay back. I'm laid back. We can always kick it, bro. It's always yeah. love. Experience, hey. as far as experience at Pomona, you know what I mean? If you know, you know. If if you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> we was out there wilding, but having a good time. Yeah, Classy. bro. Classy. Pomona Middle School was crazy. I was there for that one year, seventh grade, because I went to Nike, eighth grade. Right, right, But that right. one year, bro, <laughs> hallways See, were look, loud. Everything look, was You lit, was only bro. there for a short time, bro. Imagine being there two full years. Like, oh, my God. My seventh grade year, nuts. <laughs> in eighth grade, <laughs> the football team were undefeated in, in football. Yeah. Basketball team, we were undefeated in basketball. Yeah, that, so that whole year, that whole year was turt. Just turt. And yo, I remember the security guards. I think one of them was Kevin. Kev, he was the coach. He was the basketball coach. Bro, he was a cool guy, bro. Bro, he was hilarious, cool. bro. I was kind of pissed because it was too late to try for basketball. The mm -hmm. season was already. I was like, it was already on the I was, I was about to be on the team in school, and then I moved, and I was like, and I, I was really pissed, bro. Mm -hmm. I was like, so I moved from one school, and I can't now. This middle season, I can't. So mm -hmm. I lost like seventh grade late. right there. I was like, I was, I was really pissed, bro. Kev, that dude. Yo, shout yeah. out to Kev, the security guard from the middle man. school, you bro. You were genuine. I, I remember you all these years later, twelve Word. years later, bro. I'm like, Word. yo, I remember Kev. that guy. He was cool. He was cool. Oh, man. Yeah. I hope he's doing good. He, he kept kids out of trouble. He yeah. has good life advice. He was just a cool dude, man. And then getting back to when I first met you, bro. I remember, yo, I was like, yo, this little, this little cocky ass, confident mother. <laughs> I was like, yo. That's but you were cool, dude, cool dude, though. But I was like, yo, I, you walked with that swag, though. You had that confidence about you. It's a duality. You, you used to be like this. Chilling, bro. Yo. You know what it is. <laughs> yeah. You know what it is, bro. Yeah, make everybody laugh. Nah, he, he genuinely, though, he's one of the coolest guys I ever met. Like, this guy, his work ethic's unparalleled. I remember playing on the basketball court in recess. He used to do some crazy runs at Pomona, bro. Those outside Man. lunch runs, those those lunch uh, runs. Goaded. You, you and Lamont and Anthony, bro. Your handles, bro, shifty. I used to be mad. I'm like, bro, I'm playing the best defense I can. These guys, <laughs> I, I, cause I, one thing about me, when I'm playing a shifty ball handler, I look at their hips. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to see where their that's hips. That's what they teach you. That's yeah. A, yeah, that's how you defend people. Like, their hips tell you where they're gonna move. Yeah, I, I couldn't figure you guys, especially you and Lamar and Anthony, bro. You, you guys remember, handles. Bro, there was a lot of other shifty guys. Like, you remember, yeah. you remember Dario, Tariq. Yeah, those Tariq. Guys, yes. Both of them were just Tariq you know what I'm too. You guys had the crazy. Yeah, you, we had it. I think you, Lamar, Justin and Tariq, Bullock, Justin Bullock. Yep, you guys had the crazy handles. I couldn't figure you guys out. Even when I try my best, I'm like, yo. Yo, we had a squad, bro. We had a squad. You was yeah. in, you was in for a treat when you transferred over, though. You yeah, was, you was no, in for a treat. I, I wrote about it in my autobiography the early years when mm -hmm. I talked about Pomona. I said, yo, Pomona made me tougher, like mentally and Absolutely. physically, because I was Absolutely. like, man, Orange County, Holland Falls, small county, but you're like isolated from everything. Mm -hmm. Pomona, like, it introduced you to the real world. It's yeah, like, it's different. Yeah, it was different. different it was different. It opened like, up to more life stuff, and then also like basketball. Like, oh man. Some real hoopers out here. You get to experience kids with chips on their shoulders. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like kids who really have to have to earn what they want. Yep. And, and then the shit's just not handed to them. You know what I'm saying? Those yeah. kids, they they think and move differently. Yep. They think and move differently. It, it helped me help me later on in life, like in high school, college, and then adulthood. Now, mm -hmm. like wanna, yeah, bro. When I first met you, though, I was like, damn, this annoying ass kid, man. I know. Listen, bro, I grew out of this. Good, 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 <laughs> good thing. Good thing. I one thing about me though, yeah, I've gotten everybody. Everybody's gotten shifted. Mm -hmm. Everybody. If they if they say they didn't, they're lying to you. Mm -hmm. I've never gotten an ankle broken though, ever. 
Ankle broken, like fall on my ankles. Yeah, bro. I fell yeah. once in, co- oh, in, in high school, bro. 10th grade, coach uh, wow. playing for K Boy, bro. We in practice. Dude hit me with two jab steps. Uh, uh, I was on the ground, bro. Oh. Oh, and that time must have been crazy, though. Bro, it, w- it had to be quick. I guess, bro. I don't even yeah. know why I bit on it like that, Pause. Oh, I don't even know how that even happened, bro. Everybody was laughing at me in the gym. I'm just yeah. glad it was practice and not a game. <laughs> That would have been sick. Hey, hey, at least, yeah, at least you can get caught on film. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah that would have been <laughs> terrible. So you played AAU for the Rockland Rockets with Coach Trev and the Rockland Marnets with Junior Inman of St. Joe's. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What did he learn playing on the AAU scene that you didn't learn from your regular local school? <clears throat> oh, if I'm gonna start with Coach Trev, Coach Trev, I played. I wasn't even high school yet, so I wasn't really playing for the school team. I was playing. You know, I was young. I was like middle school, mm-hmm. early late, uh, late elementary school. Coach Trev taught me. You are not as good as you think you are. Shout out to Coach Trev. And I'm glad that he instilled that in me early because like you just said, I had a real, this real cocky attitude about me. Yeah, when you were younger. I always excelled growing up until I got to like middle school or high school where competition started to become more and more apparent. Yeah. So he really taught me like, yo, like, like he cut me the first time. Like I didn't even make the team the first time. He cut me. And he coached my brother. So he knew who I was. Mm-hmm. He me and my brother played like he knew what I was capable of. He knew my play style. And he cut me at first. Wow. And I was like, wow, like that's such a wake up call. Like I really got to put in some more pain. He called me like a week after, like, yo, uh uh, I guess he revised the situation and picked me up. I'm like, all right, cool. So now I'm playing, you know, with guys now who are super elite, Chauncey yeah. Hawkins. Yeah. Uh, Jamel Johnson, he was a football D1 uh, superstar. So it's like, you know, I'm playing with other guys who are athletic, just if not more athletic than me, better than me. So playing around those guys or playing on the Trev basically just taught me like, yo, like if you really want this, you got to learn how to put in some effort. Like effort has to be practiced. That's what he taught me. Effort yeah. has to be practiced. Like you can't just come out here and expect to just kill. Like you really got to understand that it takes consistent effort to compete and win. Yeah. Shout out to Coach Trav, man. What was your second question? My fault. And Junior Inman, what what did he learn from him? Jr. Inman taught me a lot of technical stuff about the game. So like he got, he he gave me an offensive bag essentially. He's the one that really mm-hmm. told me about footwork, how to get to your spot, get to your shot. You know what I'm saying? How to use your body because that was when I started developing some muscles. I started lifting. That's this is like high school now. High school. Okay. So it's like all right, cool. I'm playing with guys. My guy Jason Bridgewater, Kelly. Shout out to my boy Kelly. I'm playing with guys like that. So it's like all right, like. Let's 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 figure out let's figure out how I can become more of a scorer because I never really yeah. been a scorer like that in those early high school years. So I'm like, yeah. he told me how to how to put the ball in the basket, get to your spot, make the game as simple as possible. Don't overcomplicate it. Shout out to Jr. Inman. Hey, shout out to y'all, man. Y'all really did your thing, man. Especially, hey, your coach Trev, middle school man, those oh, handles, Jesus. bro, handles. Yeah, he, he did a good job with your handles, cause so, man, Coach Trev, bro, he, he had he had he had he had us in there with the plastic bags and the basketballs. Hey, that's how Kyrie did it, bro. Yeah, how dribbling, it, pushing it on the like shoulders. That. Yep. Coach yeah, Trev, he's beast. He's a good yeah, he coach now. I think he coached at Rampo College. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. He's like, he got a couple championships under his belt. He's really good. Shout out to him. Yeah, shout out to you, man. What life lessons did your AAU coaches teach you that you still carry with you today? Life lessons that my AAU coaches taught me that stays with me today. Alrighty. Yeah. That's a good one, bro. Yeah. That's a real good one. That's life lessons. I got to include that. Yeah. The most important one, you got to be accountable. Yep. That's probably the most important one that I transfer over to life, especially as I became a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything that happens on the basketball court or in life, like, you know what I'm saying? This is how, this is how I took it. Everything that happens in your life, you you kind of have some type of responsibility for. Yeah. Even if I'm walking in the street and a car hit me. Like, yeah. clearly, that wasn't my fault, but I'm yeah. in the street. Like, yeah. that's 5 yeah. 10% my did, fault. Did he look both ways? Right, exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, he told me, like, yo, like... You can't just blame the other man. You can't just blame your teammate. You can't blame this guy. Blame the ref. Uh, uh. Every situation that happens in your life, just figure out how you can take control of it. You know what I'm saying? You can only control the yeah. controllables. Yep. So like ever since that, like that simplified way of thinking for me just made everything so much simpler. So I try to. I don't really complicate things over my head because of that. Like accountability aspect. I don't really overthink and stuff like that. Like I know whatever decisions I make, yeah. I stand on it. Yep. Uh, yeah. In certain things in life, whether it's how someone feels about you or things, something didn't go your way, you can only control what you can control. That's it. Because if you if you don't if you try to do go overboard, you're gonna be stressing yourself out. Bro. And you'll stress yourself out more trying to control stuff that you can't control. Yeah. So it's like you up there do stress yourself out for for what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Remember so. that famous remember that famous video when we were younger? It is what it, it is. It is what it is, bro. <laughs> it is. It what is what it is. is. You attended Rampart High School. Describe your time in high school at Rampo and how much that place means to you. Yeah, bro, Ramapo. Like, <laughs> yo, Ramapo, bro. Like, for the people that really went there, especially while I was there, like, 
people people can shit on Rand Paul. Like everybody experiences yep. different, bro. I enjoyed it. I loved yeah. it. I, I met a lot. I have a lot of lifelong friends that I'm gonna have that I've had there. I have, my basketball career was fun. My baseball career was fun. I have teachers and administrators that I'm still cool with to this day who I can call up and, and count on. And you know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm cool with them now. Like I'm going to one of my old teachers' weddings. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like Rampo was so much fun. And if, if you go talk about my sports experience, like that was fun too. Like I learned so much. It literally shaped me into becoming a man. Like I take all those lessons very you know what I'm saying? Very strictly. Those those are all life lessons that Rampo needed to teach me, and I'm glad I can go back now yeah. and give to the youth. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel like if you didn't learn those lessons in high school? How do you think you would be right now? I mean, you know, if I didn't learn them in high school, I would I learned them eventually. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I maybe if I didn't go through certain things, or if I didn't play sports in high school, if I didn't get coached by Coach K in high school, like Losher, Goldberg, McKenzie, all those guys, like. I don't know what type of man I would be because, you know, I even really grow up with my pops. I'm not about to be on here talking, yeah. giving a sob story, but it's like yeah. those are the men that I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? Even And certain male teachers too, Mr. Norton, guys like that. Like those are just the men that I try to take bits and pieces from because those are good men in my eyes. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So without those guys, I don't know what type of dude I would have been, bro. I could have yeah. been out there in the streets doing stupid shit for real. Yeah, for real, man. Yo, I feel you on that because I don't know my dad either, so I feel you on that one. Straight like that, bro. You played JV your first two years at Rampo. What was the difference from the middle school to high school level? You know, the middle school level is, you know, it's modified. Everybody plays. So yeah. it's not really like, you know. Not really, really like the best of the best playing. Right, exactly. So yeah. it's like, you know, everybody plays. It's like, so it's really just a, a, it comes down to who has a good team. But like high school, see, it was way different. It was way different because not everybody plays. Yeah. You know, that's, a, that, that's not everybody play. You, you play if you're good enough to play, straight like that. So I had... Because there was no freshman team, I'm a freshman trying to play JV. Mm -hmm. I'm battling with sophomores and juniors to get playing time. So it was like I had to really learn quick. Like, yo, you really got to put in some effort if you want to yeah. get on the floor. We were put basketball back then was, and we had yeah, there was some was, killers back and there was, then. And then you got had more hype back then mm -hmm. too. People, kids are small now these days. Yeah, kids are smaller reason. now. After our, bro, after our generation, they're like it just got short. I don't I'm like, know what's what going on, bro. Like they, they're not feeding these kids. Uh, you know, nah, they, they, they don't eat. They don't, bro, they don't eat the lunch at Rampo, bro. <laughs> they don't eat the school lunch, bro. It's crazy, bro. Like man, I can remember our generation before and the ones before. I'm like, man, I'm freshman year house. I'm like, dang, these guys are giants. Kids. Yeah, I'm watching my brothers' games and stuff. I'm in middle school, elementary. I'm like, yo, these guys are huge. Six like, five, six six. I'm like, yo, hey, I don't want to mess with them. Now at high school, average, yeah. the, the tallest dude is like six two. That's my, my height. Exactly, bro. Yeah. So it's like, but yeah, that's crazy. You know, JV was different freshman and sophomore. You see, the freshman year and sophomore year, though, two totally different seasons. Mm. You know, freshman year, we went, what? My JV year, we went, what, 2 and 16. It was wow. bad. Damn. It was bad. We had like six, seven freshmen on the team. The next year, we went to a championship. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Man. so it's, it's crazy. That's cr nah, that's crazy. You know what's funny? Uh, My JV year, my sophomore year, we actually won the county championship. What? Yeah. Bro, against Cox Down South. I'm hating, bro. I'm against hating. Cox Down South, bro. I was nervous for that game, but man, I said, nah, I got this. I, what what year I, was this? This was 2016. So you were a junior. That was my first year of varsity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So yeah. this was, yeah. Because remember, I'm a year younger than you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, we had a good team that year. It was me, Dylan Senator, John John, all my Evan Rivera. Mm -hmm. I played, name, my, name my team is Sincere McMurray. That's my guy. Shout out John John. I played with him in college. Yeah, hey, John John. That's, hey, it's I told killer. you, that's my point guard. We love, that's my brother. Mutual respect all the time. Oh, bro. he's a terrible point guard, but he can shoot. <laughs> terrible point guard, but he can shoot. <laughs> John John, bro, I never seen, I never had a team in who could shoot from that deep consistently. Bro, I'm Lefty, watching him. Crazy. He's pulling from half court, bro, consistently like it's nothing. I don't know what's wrong with that Some, kid, like, bro. Some like Dane type stuff. Yeah, like, he's this wild. Guy, in high school, he was doing it in games too. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, college too, bro. Our pick and roll game, bro. Bro, I love that guy. He was special. Yeah, he, he, was he special. really is. That's my guy right there. Shout out to my guy, John John, man. Remember that game, bro? I was nervous, but I was going against this kid, Ryan. Uh, I forgot his name. Ryan something. I forgot his name, but he was a lefty. Yeah. And he was tall. He's like around my height or a little taller. I played great defense on him. Mm -hmm. I, I tried my best. What was the score? I don't remember the score. That's the thing. I don't remember the score. Was it close? It was a, bro, it was a competitive game. The oh, crowd okay, was okay. lit. I was a little, I was, I was a starter on that team. Mm -hmm. I was a starter. But man, I remember that was one of my best games. I had a double double that game. Like, oh, you was hooping. Yeah. Rebounds. Damn. I probably had around 12 points, around 12 rebounds. Mm -hmm. I was getting blocks. Bro, I was doing everything that game. You I was one of my best games of my career. That? You got a trophy for that, right? Yeah. Bro, I, bro, I have a picture of me with the championship trophy after that game, bro. I was I'm a little, I was like, what? I was 15 in that picture. I was, when bro. I had the low cut, no I'm hair. Hating, bro. I'm hating. We were supposed to win that. We were <laughs> supposed to win my year, bro. You, what do you mean? You were varsity that my year. My sophomore year, I'm talking about. Oh, sophomore the year before year. that, we were supposed to win the, uh, the JV championship, y'all. Pissed. Yeah. Wait, so wait, who, who y'all lost to? Nyack. We lost oh. to Spike. 
my boy Justin. Oh yeah, Jason uh, Bridgewater. And Jason Bridgewater. That's my. I still talk to Jason to this day. Yeah, that's my dude. That's my yeah, dude. Yeah, Jason. My guy's a nurse now. So. Yeah, he getting money now. He's doing his yeah. thing. He's about to get married and all that. He that's, killed us in that game though. So I'm yeah. still hate. I'm still Yo, tight Jason, about that. Jason, me and him in middle school, eighth grade that year, and Spike. Mm-hmm. Big three, bro. Yeah, bro. I have my. Those were the perimeter guards. Spike had the handles, playmaking. To this day, bro, Spike's one of the the Yo. flashiest dribblers I've ever seen, bro. I don't know about that. I don't too, know how he be doing that shit. I don't, bro. And then Jason had he had the handle, but not not like Spike, but the shooting. Yeah, that off ugly the dribble, ass jump shot off the dribble, cash, cash. Whenever uh. I, when I was getting doubled in the post, kick, I know who to kick it out to, bro. Jason that was Bridgewater. my guy. That was my guy. Bridgewater. And then me, and then Water. Me, yeah, Bridgewater. <laughs> he had the perfect name for me to be a shooter. Like, yeah. come on. <laughs> and then I was in the low post doing my thing, sending the, and then sending the screens, getting the boards, blocking mm-hmm. shots. Ember had my best game ever against actually against Marcellus and them. They had a fail still team. Mm-hmm. It was him. Carlins, all these guys. Oh my God. Carlins, Yo, bro, I saw them, bro. I saw them. I was like, damn, they got some huge dudes over there. I think Quasta was on that team too. Like, you had tall mm-hmm. guys, bro. And I was, I remember going to the gym that morning. Security guard, Mr. Foreman, shout out to him. He used to open the security, uh, the course for me early yeah. before school. And I'll just go work on my game, get shots up, middle school, eighth grade. This was the year after Pomona. Yeah. So, because I was pissed. I, I missed my whole seventh grade year because I, I moved the in the middle of the season. Yep. A championship season, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was pissed. And then, so I was like, eh, eighth grade, I'm trying to turn up, bro. I remember scoring my career high that game. I had 30, 30 30 something points. God bro. damn, boy. Against, what the and hell? I did against Marcellus and them. I was like, oh, and it was against Dylan Santor, John. I was against those guys. You getting 30 on, Xavier Rodriguez. You getting 30 on Marcellus now? I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. But, man, Marcel, I already knew who he was. Remember, I told you, I know him since 2010. Yeah, so this yeah, was yeah. like three years, four years later, mm-hmm. we played each other in middle school. I was like, man, I got it against those guys. I'm like, man, I feel good, Nah, bro. it's good, bro. Competing yeah. is good, bro. When you know you can, you know what I mean? We can play with the best of them, you good. Yeah, man. I guess it gives you a confidence bro. boost. Yeah, like, I still work out and stuff. I don't really have time to get to play basketball as much anymore because I'm doing the podcast. I'm on radio. You work, I go to work. Yeah. yeah, bro. And I'm still trying to get a sports job. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, when it's nicer, I'm going to try to go outside, you know, get some exercise, work on my game and all that. But it's just when you're busier now, it's like, damn, man. No it's time. Like, when I was I younger, that, always playing basketball. Always. Mm-hmm. You always had time. Yeah. It's different had now. Free Responsibility. Time. Kick your ass. Yeah, bro. Yeah. But, man, let's get back to it. So during your two years on varsity, you guys kind of struggled to win. Mm-hmm. So you combined for eleven and twenty eight record your junior and senior year. So mm-hmm. you went seven and thirteen your junior year, four and fifteen your senior year. Mm-hmm. I know you were pissed, <laughs> oh, especially because the following year they went to a championship. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that was my senior year. <laughs> so it's like, oh man, that's crazy. He was like, man, if I was a year younger, <laughs> how discouraging was it for someone as competitive as you for your team not seeing the success you guys wanted? Meanwhile, your rivals such as Spring Valley, they were a top to section both those years. So I looked it up on Max Preps. Hey, Spring Valley was back, number one back champs. to back those years that you guys were struggling. Mm-hmm. How, how discouraging mm-hmm. was that for you? Oh, my junior year, you know, I'm going to be honest with you, bro. It was, um, I was real jaded kind of like, you know, because my junior year was real hard for me mentally with basketball. I don't know if, you know, uh, the coach and I, I don't know if we didn't see eye to eye. Like, that's yeah, when I really yeah. understood that, like, that's another le- life lesson to go back to. Like, life really yeah. isn't fair. Like, yeah. I'm putting in the work. I'm in practice busting ass. I'm doing I'm, what I got to do. You, like, I'm trying. Yep. I just wasn't getting the burn. You know what I'm saying? If you if you think about it, I played next to the leading scorer of Rampo High School mm. of all time. So it's like, I'm playing under him. How can I expect to get burned like that? You know what I'm saying? I'm putting in all yeah. the pain I can, but this guy's averaging 30 points a game. <laughs> well, who was that, by the way? Divine Caesar, my dog, my oh, boy man. Divine. Yeah, That's my crazy. brother, yeah. 30 points per game. He was aver- it was like 29.8, bro. He was wilding. All right, we'll give it to 30. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll give he it to was 30, wilding. Man. So it's like, yeah. you know, playing under a tough, a tough guy like that, you know, they had other gu- tough guards on the team. So it's like, it, it was it was really discouraging, you know. Maybe yeah. and I almost hung it up after that for real. Like I was about to be like, you know, maybe just the sport thing. Like maybe want to start that job, get some money. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah. just like, yo, forget it. Like I did get a job that summer. Like yeah. The next then the next year I found out I got a text from um Coach Losher, mm-hmm. somebody who I knew since I was a little kid. Like you know, yeah. I'm about to coach the varsity program. Ah uh, ah, uh, I was a little more optimistic about it. You know, I was like, all right, like maybe things could be a little different. Maybe yeah. things could be a little different. And it did. You know, I, I got all the playing time I wanted. The light was green. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I deve- He developed me as a player, especially on the offensive end. We just couldn't figure it out in terms of chemistry, really. Like, you know, we 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 had to bring up some guys from JV. So it was just a lot of different skill sets on the team that we just couldn't. Yeah. We couldn't bring it all together. We couldn't really figure it out. When we were figuring it out, it was already too late. Yeah. Like we, we was, it was right too late in the season. Exactly. Exactly. We was competing against guys, losing games by like four, five, six. We just couldn't uh-huh. so finish the So losing close games. Yeah. Not getting like blown out or anything. In the like beginning, that. we were getting we were getting crushed. Like we could we was getting like 13, 14, 15 point games. We're like, yo, what's the problem? 
Yeah. You know, but Losha is very, that's one thing I appreciated about Losha. He was very thorough. He yeah. told me how important it is to be thorough of the basketball game. Look at every aspect of the game and figure out why aren't you winning? Straight like yeah. that. So, you know, he taught me a lot in that aspect. So, you know, those, both having those, both those seasons, as competitive as I am, like after that, I just hated losing. Yeah. You know, so you it's know. like, we guys got to figure it out. We just had to figure it out. Bro, I feel you on that uh, coaching stuff. Like, I had a cool coach in high school, remember? Because mm -hmm. I was remember I, I tore my ACL. Mm -hmm. I missed my whole junior year. That's why I didn't do track and basketball. I said my senior year, my knee's not going to be the same. I can't do track. The demand on your knee is crazy. Mm -hmm. And track is not like basketball. You don't have four other people helping you on the court. Yeah, it's all you. It's just you. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'm not going to do track. I'm just going to do basketball. Man, the pain I went through physically and mentally trying to come back. Because I, I, I did exercises at my house. Physical therapy. They said, yo. We see you doing exercise at your house. Your knee looks good. You don't even have to come here anymore because that's how wired I am, bro. Mm -hmm. Some people, they ask me, DJ, how you stay fit? You do these home workouts? I'm like, yeah, I just do them because I want to be in shape, mm -hmm. you know? They were like, man, when I'm home, I just want to chill. Nah, I, I, I have the motivation to be able to do that. Before yeah. I used to go to the gym, all these years, bro, I was working out in the house or I go play basketball. That's how I stay in shape. Mm -hmm. And I also have a fast metabolism with health. But then again, just because you're skinny doesn't mean you're in shape. Yeah, you got to keep it simple, too. Yeah. I'll do push-ups. I'll do jump, jump ropes, stretching, ab stuff. That's how I got my body the way it is now. We're going to your fitness journey because we know you're a fitness guy. But, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But yeah, man, I'll do those. And then I'll come back my senior year. I'll go to all the workouts in the summer. I'm busting my ass. Went to the scrimmages. I'm playing with a knee brace on. So, and I'm I'm running. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I could tell my knee wasn't the same. Mm -hmm. I was running full speed. And I feel like ah, I wasn't feeling as fast as I used to. Like, yeah, I can still dunk. But I feel like, I don't feel like I was as, like getting up there as much anymore. You felt the difference. Yeah. yeah. I felt, it was my right knee. It, was, it wasn't my jumping knee. But I still, like, you, you need both legs. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, defensively, I still was good. But I feel like offensively, like, sometimes my confidence wasn't there. I mm -hmm. was like, because I'm really hard on myself. I remember, I remember in high school, especially my freshman year, I was like, Man, like man, eighth grade, I was killing, and I was oh, I always put the work in. It was never something with like a work related ethic issue. I'm like, man, some of these games, I'm like, man, how did I not get that pass? Like, I mean, I didn't catch this. Like, damn, bro, what's going on? Because mm -hmm. I wrote about it in my autobiography. Like, I, I dealt with anxiety, stuff like that, and I would be hard on myself. I'm like, man, I really suck today. Because you know, you are what you think in your head. Yeah, of course. And I was like, man, I need to stop like talking to myself like that. Because I was my own worst enemy. I was like, you know, I, I, I'm harder on myself than anybody else. You're bro. your worst critic every time. And my teammates like, yo, DJ, you're a beast, bro. Like, what's going on, bro? I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, I'll be pissed. But then like, I, I was inconsistent at times. Sophomore year, I was more consistent. Freshman year, I was inconsistent. And I got hurt my junior year. And then and I, was, I was really pissed. I felt like that was going to be my best year. Mm -hmm. And then senior year, we had a stack team, bro. John, John, me, Carlins. Carlins. Uh, sincere McMurrin. Mm -hmm. Sincere had some of the best handles I've ever seen. One uh, of the best Jacob, players ever. Garrison. Jacob Garrison, Evan Rivera. We had a bro, Michael Kimball. We had a stack Host, team. Your big Mike Ocho, yeah, a fact. Bro. We had Alejandro Castellanos. He was like six five, six six. Him and Mike were the tallest on the team. Mm -hmm. Mike was six seven. Uh, Alejandro was six six. Something like that. He's from the Bronx. Mm -hmm. Bro, and then our bench, we were loaded. Like, and I was mostly from my class. And then my boy, Brendan, the Jesus 2019, Chris Gleaton. They were shifty guards, handles could shoot. Like, we were loaded, bro. Even your team before that year, your junior year yeah. was good. That senior year, But our, that our junior year, your senior year, our team record wasn't good. It our wasn't. Team, it yeah, wasn't. we weren't. Yeah, our team record you Remember that good. senior night game? I don't know. I don't remember. It was when, you know, remember Cameron, uh, Cameron Lewis, yes. right? He yes, called yes. The, He called the dunk. Oh, really? You remember that? Oh, oh man. Yo, man. That was, it feels so long ago. Yo, bro, that was probably the loudest atmosphere I've ever experienced. Yeah, look, games, varsity, bro, they were crazy. At North and I've seen some crazy games. Yeah. That, was, that was definitely top five loudest I don't know if gyms. the games are like that nowadays for varsity, but I feel like back then in our era, it was crazy. I think it depends on the teams you play. Nowadays, yeah, it's, it's like yeah, rivalry games. I feel like COVID was ruined a little bit. But during our days, it was crazy. And then see, senior year, I was like, like, yeah, I didn't mind coming off the bench at all. But I'm like, I went to all the workouts. I put it to work in. I, I know I can make an impact. Mm -hmm. Every one time the coach put me in, like five seconds left in the game, game's over. I felt mad disrespected, bro. I, you know, I, I heard. I, I, and, and I was like, man, I'm wasting all my time. And, and, I, and my, meanwhile, my knee's throbbing every day at practice. I'm going to train all the time, getting ice, all this, because my knee wasn't the same. My knee wasn't really the same until like two, three years after the surgery. I got surgery in 2016, July, mm -hmm. a few years, a few uh, weeks before my 16th birthday. My knee didn't really get to like, like okay, like I'll like be able to swelling because I used to be able to just standing for a long period of time and I get swelling until like 2019. Oh, that's so uncomfortable, bro. I'd hate yeah. that. And then meanwhile, I'm in practice killing myself every day. My shoes weren't even the best material. I'm slipping. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, my knee can't take this, bro. You know, I heard too, like at that school, like there's a lot of politics that go over there oh, no, too. There is. That's why yeah. I, when I made it my freshman year, because I'm a new kid, bro. Mm -hmm. I used to move a lot before uh, high school. I've been a half now for 10 years. I'm like, man, I don't know if I made the team. I heard about the politics. And then I killed it in the tryouts. They're like, 
Oh, new kid. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was the only new kid on the team. Yeah, but everybody else, and they went to the middle school. Everybody's been there with the middle school. Yeah, everybody went to the middle the school. Field Stone, yeah. I was the only new kid, bro, that ninth grade year. I was shocked. A lot goes on over there, huh? That, that showed me something. That showed me, like, okay. Like, oh, damn. I, I'm, so I how would you, this. one through 10, how would you rate your, your coaching experience there? Like, the like coach was you, cool. Like coaching, I, I just, coach, I just felt disrespected you. that senior year. I was like, man, Fair. I was like, man, I'm putting all this, I'm going to all the workouts. I know I put the work in. I, I, I'll do drills at the house, all that, at the mm-hmm. park, everything. And I'm like, I don't, and I don't care about coming off the bench. I don't mind that. But then I'm like, you put me in five seconds. It's early in the season, by the way. My knee's killing me. And, and I practice. I don't, I don't really, nobody really knew because I didn't want to tell anybody, but right, my right. knee's killing me, bro. Like I physically, it was affecting me first physically. I was like, I, mentally, I got this. I'm I mean, through it. Was it affecting your game a lot? Like, like. I feel like my explosion wasn't there offensively. Mm-hmm. Like when I'm in the post, the moves I used to do to make, I couldn't like, because when I try to do the jab step now, I'm thinking about my knee. Before, before I tore my ACL, I was, I was just was going. just doing it, yeah. Yeah. Because then when I tore it, I'm like, I, I don't know. I'm a little, a little slippery down mm-hmm. there. I don't know. Because I didn't, I didn't have money. I didn't have the best shoes. I, I had what I had. Right, so. you just did. Yeah, do yeah. yeah. Play the cards you would dealt. You know, when you tear your ACL, bro, or Achilles. Uh, listen, uh, no wish back, hey, no I'm wishing, cool. but hey, hey, it's in the back of your mind, bro. Not playing. Nah. Yeah. Certain moves, I'm just like, all right. I never dealt with major injury. I always had the hook shot, though. Always had the hook shot. Oh, you Kareem? Yeah, bro. I had that since I was a little kid, bro. I used to do that all the time. That's AJ tomorrow on them. Oh, (laughs) boy thinks he's Kareem (laughs) Abdul-Jabbar. I'm dead. All right, so let's get back to it. Uh, Who were the best players you ever played with? Like with on the same team or against? With. We're going to get to with first and then against next. In high school, we're talking. Whole career. Whole career. Best guys I ever played with. College, high school, AU, any. Yeah. I'm going to just name some guys, right? Yeah. You know, we named a couple guys already. Like you said, Marcellus, Chauncey, Mark, Divine, um, guys that I've played with. Um, Michael Dennis was good. I remember Michael. Um, yeah. He had a handle, too. Guys that I've played with. We're talking high school, high school. Uh, Mezu was good. Yeah. I said Alize. I think. I don't, I don't know if I, 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 if I didn't say so. Alize, Alize, yeah. Cam Haywood, Lante. Um, these are all guys who were like dogs, and man. Rampo, they were just yeah. dogs. Yeah, bro. Um, who else did I play with? Justin Bullock, that was a point scorer at Albertus. Like, um, I know I'm missing some guys. Played a lot of guys, bro. For real. Those are the ones I come up with on the top of my head. Yeah, yeah those, those are some good guys right there. Hey, Michael Desmond and him, he had a handle too. Yeah, but he, he, he was a hell of a too. teammate. Can't lie. He was a hell of a teammate. Great guy, man. How about the plays you ever, best plays you ever played against? Played against? I'm going to go to high schools. I want to talk like high school varsity teams because that's yeah. really what people like really pay attention to. So it's yeah. like guys I played against. Let me think. If I'm going to just name some schools like Clark Sound South had Tony Hastings. Uh, Pearl River has Steven Lapis. Uh, Spring Valley, uh, they had Devin Lawson. Um, oh, yeah. Elijah Bashoon. They had some them, some transferred guys in too. I think their name was like Mike and Dre, my senior year. They were tough too. Um Tappan Z had Kevin Lynch, seven footer, but just about. He's like 6'10. He's built like a unit. Wow. I think he played at Stack. He was good. Um, no, I'm That's trying to think of some guys from North Rockland. Mike Arias from North yeah. Rockland. You know Mike. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. Mike was a dude. Yo, bro, bro, I, 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 I still be struggling to guard Mike sometimes. He, he bro. had some of the best handles. That too. boy got And the, he had the <laughs> shot too, so you can't go under the screen. You know what I'm saying? He's going to hit that three on you. Mike will hit that, bro. Mike's tough. He can't coaches lie. now too. Just yeah, like yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Mike, EJ from Nyack. Oh, yeah. EJ yep. from Nyack, super tough. Um, am I missing the school? I said South, the North. North, North never really had. Oh, North had JR, Jeezy, of course. Oh, yeah. North had Jeezy. Very great, very great player. Yeah, he um, some dogs. Now he's a, a basketball trainer, TTG. Go, go lock in with my boy Jeezy. Yep. Um, did I miss any schools? Oh, guys from like other schools across the bridge, like uh, the kids from Mount Vernon those years. They, they were super Mount, tough. They oh, won the Mount chip Vernon. that year. Yeah, Mount Vernon was tough. Um, tough. What's that? Uh, there's some dude named from a Marinette. His name is Miles, but he jumps oh, 20 man. feet off the damn ground, bro. I, couldn't, I ended up playing him again in Juco, bro. Uh, he played for Westchester. That's super crazy. tough, bro. There was definitely some tough guys in the section. I can't lie. Bro, our generation has some athletes, bro. Yeah, I athletes. can't lie. A lot of them went to Jersey schools, but for the ones that stuck around, yeah, they, they made some noise for sure. Oh yeah, they put the town on notice. A hundred percent. So I know you played baseball in high school. How do you describe your experience playing baseball? Yo, baseball was fun. Like I never really, like, I didn't go into it like trying to be, you know, Otani or nothing. Like yeah. I just wanted to have fun. My best friend played. My the coach was my coach technically, so mm-hmm. it was reversed. It was, like my freshman year, my JV basketball coach 
was the varsity baseball coach. Yeah. And the varsity basketball coach was the JV baseball coach. It was literally just swapped. Yeah. So it was literally like I never skipped a beat. Like it just yeah. made me cultivate a relationship with them closer. Shout out to Mackenzie, my dog. Mm-hmm. So it's like baseball was fun. It was, practice was long. Yeah. Fucking two to six. Like, yeah, bro. Mad baseball. long. Just outside. That's like, the thing about baseball. I mostly watch during the playoffs because the games are too long. Oh, my God. Oh, my bro, God. Bro, and that's the thing. Like, high school, it's cold outside. We're yeah. playing games in April, March. Yeah. So it's like 30, 40 degrees. I'm out there in the outfield. Like, all right, let's go. I can't imagine what football players feel. Whew. When it's winter, that's winter. It's a different beast. That's why, yeah. I don't, that's why I don't play football. Yeah. I, reason, there's two reasons why I don't play football because the weather and because I was skinny as a kid. Mm-hmm. I would have got cracked. Yeah, I'm a bitch, bro. I can't take a hit. <laughs> bro, I would have got cracked. I played one year at Pop Warner. Yeah. I went 9 and 0, got a championship, never played again. <laughs> I said, you know what? I'll stick to basketball yeah, and bro. I'll do track. We're safe. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, safe. My body's meant for basketball. I'll, that's I'll stick it. to that. That's it. <laughs> So it's now time to make one of the biggest decisions every human must make to, at one point in their life, college. Ooh. What colleges were you considering at the time, and did you know what you wanted to pursue? Well, fresh out of high school, I knew I wanted to go to RCC just to yeah. save money for my moms and everything like that. So yeah. if we're talking like when I was leaving RCC, like when I when I was first leaving RCC, I wanted to play basketball still. I was definitely interested yeah. in in other schools. Like I was I was looking at Del High. I was looking at where I went, SUNY Oneonta. I was looking there. I was looking at Cortland, yeah. their basketball program. I was looking to play in Tampa. As a D two school, um, they sent me a letter, so I was I was really trying to go down there. And it just wasn't really giving me enough bread, so I didn't really go down there with them. But you know, like I made the decision on Sunni on the Alta because I was just like, you know, it'd be a different environment for me. I'll be mm-hmm. upstate New York. I'll be out there in the middle of nowhere. I didn't want to go to Albany where I'd see half of Spring Valley in Rockland County. So I was like, you know what? Me and show me and my shorty. She was just like, you know, on the school. I'm like, I bet we out. So yeah. picked Sunni on the Alta for my destination. Mm. So before we get into Oneonta, RCC, you play college ball. Yeah. Describe your time playing college ball there. And then you also study human performance studies while at RCC. Mm-hmm. What made you interested in choosing that field? Choosing human performance studies. Well, I knew I wanted to, at the, the original goal was to be an athletic trainer straight out of high school. You yeah. know, shout out to Smitty, Rampo's athletic trainer for the last 100 years. That guy is ancient. The goal was to retire him. Like, yeah. whenever he's ready to retire, I'll... Take you know what I mean? Take his place. Like I would yeah. love to. I would love to come apparent. back. Exactly. That was the original yeah. plan for me to come back to be the AT. Mm-hmm. They ended up changing the rules and stuff later. I found out when I was at Oneonta, but that's the reason why I got into that field anyway. But um, yeah, I just human performance studies. You know, just studying the body always seemed interesting to me. Like yeah. you know, the body we've had this. It's been the same for all this time for hundreds yeah. of years. Yeah. Why not study it and get to know it? So yeah. I was just like, you can maximize it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I just took that opportunity to. Learn about myself and how to heal myself and, you know, whatever therapeutic modalities that I or somebody else I know may need. So it worked out. Now my friends, if something's wrong with their body or they want to question about their body, they can ask yo, me. Yo, Cam, yo, Cam, yo, my knee aching right now. What bro, should I do? My manager's like, yo, my knee's really hurting. Like, I don't know what to do. He has a gout and stuff. Like, <laughs> I told him a couple stuff to do the next day. He's like, yo. My knee, like, it feels so much better. I'm like, oh, wow, you yo, listen Cam, to me. Yo, Cam, I think I just tore my uh, uh, shoulder, man. Oh, you basketball. tore something? Yeah. Go see a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go see a doctor. Yo, Cam, uh, my hip's a little sore today. From there you go. There you yeah. go. Soreness, I can, I can help. I help can help. That. Yeah. <laughs> but to the first question about Juco basketball, see, Juco was fun, too, because I had to... I, mean, I was still battling the same battles I was my junior and senior year of high school. Like, mm. I ended up playing Juco, still with my guy, Divine, playing playing under another great player. Yeah. They transferred in another great player from Spring Valley, um, Dre Downing, another great guard. So I got two guards that I got to that I gotta battle to to earn some playing time, yeah. right? And they were familiar, familiar with the coach. I wasn't. So it was like, yeah. wow, back at the bottom, you know? Like, yeah. got to build my way up. And I'm going to the workouts, yeah. busting ass in, in the workouts, tried out, busting ass in practice. But it's just yeah. like... I had a, that's when my confidence issue started to really, yeah. I had a real confidence issue in RCC. I had a real confidence issue. So it was like. You started having that doubt in your back yeah, of your mind. That so, was me in high school at certain points. I'm so like, it was like, damn. Playing under those guys and the, the team environment wasn't great. So there, there wasn't speaking. The whole team as a team, nobody was really giving me what I needed to hear. So yeah. I was really just beating myself up all the time. So, you know, the first year it was, it was hard. The second year it was a lot better. A lot better. I got more PT. I'm getting more confidence. I'm learning about my game. My team jump environment's shots. better. The team environment's better. I'm playing with another. I'm playing with my boy Jamie. Shout out to my boy Jamie, fantastic guard. My boy Tristan, my uh, my boy Alex, playing with just guys who I have fun with for real. Divine came back. We're having another great season. So, yeah. you know, it was uh, it was, it was a fun experience. My second year, it definitely yeah. made me learn like, yo, like stay down before you come up. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's like Drake said, started from the bottom, now he's Now he yeah, yeah, We wasn't yeah. winning game, nothing like that, but like Juco was really, you know, that's for also your personal development as a yeah. player. You know, I learned a lot as a man. I'm still in school. I'm trying to balance school, work, and basketball. Yeah. College, like, bro. I wanted to play college ball, but my knee still wasn't. I, I was like, I, I, don't, bro, I might have to give it up. <laughs> my knee. Yeah. I got class. Eight, nine, ten o'clock, bro. And I was still, t and I was t at that point. I'm like, man, I'm trying to get a car, bro. I'm, I don't want to be taking. You want to get bus. money, bro? You was trying yeah, to get bro. money. I was like, man, I'm like basketball at work. I need a car. I can't be stranded. I'm at 18 now. I want to be starting. See, living if you life. wasn't hurt, you might have, you might have took the risk and did both. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, I need, I need that car, bro. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be taking that bus all the time. Cause sometimes the bus maybe miss late for school, bro. Probably sometimes standing they don't up even on the show bus. up. Sometimes they're like, oh, the, the bus, bus didn't show up. Yeah, one oh, time, bro, shit. I was so mad. I was like. Hey, the weather's kind of bad. Is the bus coming? They're like, oh, no, something happened. I'm like, are you serious? I said, fuck that bus. <laughs> yeah, bro. I was, I was like, mom, I, I, that's why I was trying to get a job. I, got, mm -hmm. I started working as a senior in high school, KFC, even though I didn't like that place. But three for three years, it got me a car. You got to get money, it right? got me a car within a year and a half because, bro, I used to walk in rain, snow, mm -hmm. everything, bro, to work. Everything. My mom never I my mom never picked me up. I didn't tell her, unless the weather was really inclement. After mm -hmm. my shift was over, unless it was like pouring rain. Other than that, I walked home. How far was the walk? Like, like 15 minutes. You got to do what you got to do, bro. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. I felt that, bro. My coworkers would bring me home sometimes, especially if I did like a 12-hour shift because mm -hmm. I did that sometimes, bro. Those were not the days. See, I couldn't just not. You know, you're done with rude people, too. You work in a restaurant. Exactly. So you know, I was about to say, bro, know. I couldn't just yeah. not work. I like nice things, bro. So I'm like, forget yeah, that. Yeah, you like, got to hold back sometimes people. But when people say certain things to me, I'll, I'll let them know, like, you ain't going to talk to me like that, you know? Yeah, I'm just like juggling all that is hard. Yeah, bro. bro. It's hard. Uh, hey, those days made me tougher. Yeah, that's really it, bro. did. That's made, it. Made me a man, bro. So you mentioned you chose Oneonta as your college. What stood out to you about them that separated them from other colleges you're considering the transfer to? I felt like nobody that I knew was going there. Mm. I wanted to go there with a complete new, just new identity. Not new identity, but I wanted to go there you like start yo, I don't fresh. Want, yeah, I want to start, start fresh. fresh. I don't want to. I don't want to see nobody I know. I want to make new friends. Yeah, new, just a whole new environment type. You know, and yeah. it was. It was fun. I'm glad I did. Yeah. Now I met. I have lifelong friends that I met there. So yeah, you know what's funny? Uh, so after my sophomore year of college at RCC, I had three schools on my list. I was thinking of transferring: Oneonta, New Paltz, and Albany. You chose the worst one. <laughs> no, I did not. Yeah, you Yo, did, New Paltz. Bro. Shout out New Paltz. Nah, New Paltz. I love that place, bro. Everybody from New Paltz wish they bro, went to Oneonta. Bro, Oneonta, bro. I, I didn't do. I didn't do like an official visit where like a regular tourist person. My friend. My friend Madison, she actually went to school for education there. Mm -hmm. She showed me around. I saw how far it was to drive, bro. I was like, I can't do this. Four and a half hours. From where? Bro, from where? From here. It's like four hours. Four and a half. Two and a half hours, bro. bro it was like, I'm, I'm, not, bro, I'm not even joking. No, like she's bullshitting, bro. I drove there every, <laughs> I've driven there over a hundred times probably, bro. bro. Even it's then, two and a half three, hours. Bro, I don't know. It was like three and a half. At, three and a half. Three and a half probably for me. And you're, you're further, we're further upstate from me. I live in Spring Valley. <laughs> we're further up, so it's less time from I, here. Oh no, it was just three and a half. Was, no, bro, was, she bro, lied. I was my former partner at the time. We were driving up there. I'm like, damn, bro. She lied, and then I bro. went up there. I'm like, man, this is a ghost town up here, bro. This one, I'm like, yo. You went in the summertime? Nah, this was during uh during the school year. During the school year? Was yeah, it cold bro, out still? Bro, it was a ghost town. I was like, I was like, Madison, like, I went, I went through the town. I didn't really see nobody. I'm like, what's going on over here, bro? I was so spooked, bro. <laughs> and then, but okay, and New Paltz was better, like. Bro, uh, I'll get to New Falls, but Oneonta, and then I was like, I didn't really get to meet any people either. I was like, because this was, I think this was uh, right before COVID, right before COVID started. I was visiting. I was there. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know you went there though. No, so yeah, I yeah, exactly, yeah, I didn't exactly. know you went there. If I would have known you went there, we're like, okay, you could come show me around. I definitely would have. Yeah, because I didn't. Know, I didn't really. Know, I only know she went there, and then my boy Jake transferred there. But we went to RC at the same time, so he wasn't there yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I went there. I'm like, I don't see anybody. Like, yeah, I saw people, but I don't really know. What so to what say. stuck out about New Paltz? All right, bro, when I went to New Paltz, this was really right before COVID. So thank God, bro. Right before COVID. I went to New Paltz, bro. Stuck out right away. It was good for my major, one, communication media. Yeah. They were great. Like, they were great. I saw the internships. They had ABC, all this. I was like, wow. And then the RT school, the people were nice. Like, everybody, everybody was amazing. Yeah, they, were, yeah. it, they were welcoming, all that. It was diverse school. And it was only an hour away from where I was. And I had a partner at the time. So I was like, oh, okay. And I'm not far from home. I come see my family. So I was like, oh, not that far a drive. I go, when I, when I'm, I'm going to be on campus, mm -hmm. but if I want to go down and see my family or my girl at the time, I was like, oh, I could come down. It's not too far. Not too far a drive. And it's not far from the city. Hey, that yeah. shit was whack, bro. No, no, no it's not. Nah, bro. Only on to, bro. It. Even Albany would have been more vibey, bro. Nah, my, my teacher I talked to at RCC before I was thinking of schools transferring to, Richard Conley. Shout out to him. One of the greatest teachers I ever had. He, I said, Albany I had on my list. He was like, 
for media communications, that's not the best school. If you were doing business, Albany's your school. Yes. But when I, I and I looked, looked at it, I was like, okay, Albany, yeah, it's probably not. I looked at their program, communication media, where I was pursuing, I was like, it ain't really the best. That's why I didn't go to Albany. And I knew Albany was a wild party school. Mm -hmm. What my focus though, I still would have been able to focus, but I just knew it wasn't the best for my major. If I was a business major, I probably would have went to Albany. No, I get that though, because only answers. Or like criminal like... justice, I probably would have went to Albany. Albany is good for that. Criminal justice, business, a lot of people who do those majors, I know they've gone to Albany. Mm -hmm. New Pulse was good for like media and film, stuff like that. So I was like, and I just liked the vibe of the school. It wasn't far. It was just, and then I got to be a sports announcer there. So like it was, it was uh, great. No, that's, Radio that's hosting cool. there. That's cool. Yeah, that's why, that's why my fear, I'm not really fearful of speaking in front of people, especially when it's something I like to do, like mm -hmm. sports. Because New Pulse, sports announcing, I, I volunteered for that. I didn't get paid for it. I did it for my resume. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I do that if I go to Albany and Oneonta. You would have did it for Oneonta. The Oneonta, Oneonta yeah. games was lit. Oneonta, yeah. yeah. Albany, I don't know if I would have gotten a chance because I, I don't know. I don't know. You might have if, if yeah. the if the you know, the major wasn't too saturated. Yeah. But yeah, I knew, I knew Oneonta had a good communication program, but it was just too far. And then I saw the town. I was like, ah. The town cool, boy. The little small if, town. I think if I would have took an official visit, like with people actually showing me around, like I did for New Paltz, maybe it would have been different. It would have been different. And if yeah. you saw the campus, it would have been different. The campus yeah. is beautiful. That's what yeah. sold me. It, it was on campus, though. I was on campus. She showed me around campus. Oh. Yeah. It was just like ghost town. I was like, damn, no one's like, no one here. But yeah. I'm pretty sure there's more students in Oneonta than New Paltz. I'm sure too, but New Paltz, I saw all the kids. It was during springtime, too. It was nice outside. I'm like, yo, this is beautiful, bro. That's because nobody, you went on campus looking for kids? Come on, bro! All the kids at the cribs wilding. <laughs> Yo, bro! Hey, it was it was it was crazy time, bro. It was crazy oh, man, time. It's crazy. It's <laughs> crazy. So you continue studying about the human body while at Oneonta. You majored in exercise science. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell me more about why you're so passionate about fitness and the stress that comes with it, as well as maintaining a healthy lifestyle to be in peak optimal sh optimal shape at times. You know, like times. exercise science. That program at Oneonta was was a blessing. I, I've, I've learned. I learned a lot. That's one. Uh, I had some cool professors, some grimy professors, but I met I met some good homies along the way, and that's really what it's about. These programs, it's not really about what they teach you; it's about the people you meet, the connections you make, and the stuff you really learn from them. Yeah. So, like, shout out to my friends that I made there in that program. The program was great. I learned a lot. What keeps me, what, what makes me want to stay on top of this is like the real answer, bro. I just want to look good when I'm 70. That's the real answer. Yeah. But yeah, the less you. superficial answer, it's like you know, and I'm not saying I'm a you know, like, all my friends ask me, like, oh, what do you eat? Like, you must be on this strict diet. Like, no, I enjoy yeah. food just like you do. Yeah. But what most people don't understand is balance. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing the gym teaches me. And that's one thing people need to learn about life. You know? Like, yeah. there's God, devil, he um, heaven, hell, yin, yang. You know, light, dark. Like, everything. Hot, cold. Exactly. Yeah. Everything has a balance to it. Like, everything has to have a balance to it. So it's like... It, it it resonates and teach, teach me, teaches me different things about life, the gym, which is why I like to stay in there, which is why I like to, to stay in good physical shape also. It's like yeah. people treat you different also when you're in good physical shape, I learn. Like, yeah. as, I, like when I, as I just become more physically in shape and stuff like that, I'm not saying this on no cocky shit. I'm just, it's just an observation I've made. Nah, bro, like, you put the work in. You, you, you deserve people, that confidence. People treat you different. Yeah, like, man, yeah, like But trust me, I go, I go to the gym too. Right, so you know the yeah. confidence it can bro. bring you. Yep. And like as a person with already who I already have, you know, a good amount of confidence. It's like yeah. the gym helps me keep my head high. And, and it's it's something I'm passionate about that I put a lot of time into that I'm proud about. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And it shows. Yeah. Like I'm gonna show it. So yep. it's like I'm like I put the pain in exactly. the work and I'm gonna show this body. Exactly, exactly. Just so, when it's nice out. <laughs> and it's like and also I'm motivational to my friends. Yeah. Which is what I like. Same thing, bro. You know what they say? The saying, you hang out with five broke people, you'll be the sixth. You hang out with five yeah. billionaires, you'll be the you'll be the sixth. You are who you surround yourself with. Exactly. So if you yeah. if I'm if I'm doing what I gotta do to show my friends how it's not that difficult, the people around me to take care of your body and love yourself, yeah. they're gonna do it too. Yep. And now I got one of my one of my closest homies in there. He's a beast now. He's hitting me up every day. Domino like, effect. Exactly. Domino effect. So if I can just if I can touch one person, you know, I did my job. Bro, I, I did my 100%, job. Bro. Like that's all it is. Is I can influence people. I'll be, I'll be at work, bro. I'll be at yeah. work. Like, yo, what are your workouts? Like, oh, can you get? Yo, can yeah. you give me some? I got my managers calling me. Like, yo, I'm in the gym, bro. What can I do? Yo, what, what, what foods can I stop eating and start eating to do better? Like, the fact that people reach out to me to better themselves, I can give you that service. Makes me want to stay in it. That's dope, man. Yo, I feel you on that 100. Like me, you know me. I've always been fit. Of course. High school, ever like, yo, DJ, you're fit, lean. But now people see me since like over the last year. Mm -hmm. They saw 2022 was after college, bro. I went through like life stuff, mm -hmm. heartbreak, got my heart broken, stuff like that. 
I started. I joined Snap Fitness December 2022. I adopted a Black Winter Soldier persona, man. Mm -hmm. I know. Me and you are two fitness beasts. Yeah, I'm bro. gonna show the pictures on the screen. You're gonna <laughs> see it. Like, bro, I took my physique to the next level. Mm -hmm. I've always been slender, muscular. But now, now you're people are like, on. Now people are like, yo, you got the, you look yoked now. I feel like, yo, DJ, I remember you in high school, you were fit, you were mm -hmm. lean, you had abs and all that. But now you're like the you arm definitions. The on, yeah, yeah. I did boxing with my cousin in LA for the first time. What keeps you going? Motivation. No, well, oh, motiv me. motivation dies eventually. So oh. what keeps you going? One, like you, I want to look good when mm -hmm. I'm 50, 60, 70. Right. That's just me. Mm -hmm. I just like taking care of myself. I always said I want to live to 80, 90, 100. I like to see the 22nd century. I'm, mm -hmm. I was born in the 21st century. It'd be cool if I could see the 22nd That's a fact. century. I agree. That'd be cool. And then uh, people said I've inspired them over the years through my sports stuff and also the gym reels they've seen through the years. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, DJ, your sports stuff, you being consistent, you in the gym all the time. Like, yo, that really motivates me. People have said it to me like up front too. Yeah. And I remember, and then what keeps me going too is, I remember when I went to that uh, Thanksgiving party, we're celebrating with Nick, Nicholas Julian and them. They they threw that party. People were came up to me like, "Yo, you're DJ DJ Sports Show. I know who you are." Mm -hmm. I was like, "Yo, that's, that's like I, good, I never that's even met them, feeling, bro. Though, right? I never met them in my life." I'm like, "Damn, that like, bro, I kind of want to. I wanted to cry, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I I have cried. I was like, damn, man. There's been days I wanted. To, I was like, man, I'm wasting my time. What am I still doing? This like mm -hmm. sometimes you put mad work in an article or a podcast, you don't get the views or the clicks you expected because you're putting all this work in. But it's like, nah, I'm going to keep going. You so I hear down. stuff like that. And then when I met Rich Paul, I don't meet Rich Paul if not for this. DJ Sports Show. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't shake. I'm not going on that stage shaking his hand, bro, and getting that picture, bro. Mm -hmm. And him asking me, where are you from? I'm like, the 845. He asked me my name and all that. I was like, That's damn, bro. That's I was like, yo, fact. he really knows my name And now. like that moment, like, yeah. if, imagine if you, if, you, if, you, you, if you weren't doing this, you wouldn't have had that. Nope. You I don't meet the OGs from Atlanta. I don't meet Adam Silver. None of that. None of that, bro. I don't None meet Steve Weiss of NFL Network. So None even if that, you're bro. not getting the clicks and stuff, look at the other stuff that's yeah. happening. You know what I'm saying? One thing I learned, too, is the OGs taught me this. Good thing I went to that, that a convention in Atlanta. I learned a lot, bro. They said, you don't even have to be big to get sponsors. You can get local sponsors. You don't mm -hmm. have to be... Because before I went there, bro, for last year, this was April 2023, so it's coming on a year now. Before that, I thought you had to be big. You had to get clicks, like Pat McAfee or something. Mm -hmm. Hey, now when I learned that, I learned so much lessons down there. I was like, oh, so I don't need to get a million views or thousands yeah. of views. Cause I was like, I thought that's the way you got to gotta get that if mm -hmm. you want to get a sponsor or something. But nah, I learned a lot down there, bro. And I'm glad I never quit doing DJ Sports. Because trust me, there were, I've had my a lot of highs and I had a lot of lows doing this, bro. That's it, bro. It's, yeah. it's, the progress is never going to be linear. The journey is yeah. never going to be linear. Peaks and valleys, Peaks man. Peaks and valleys. That's all it's about, bro. And in the gym, and just people have asked me my workout plan, too. I was like, yo, I just yeah, I eat healthy. Feeling, bro. I drink lots of water. I got dudes girls and Girls and guys. I'm sure girls and guys ask you, too. Like, yeah, yo, what's your workout work? plan? I'm yeah. like, hey, if you want to work out with me, let's do it. See, that's the thing though. I, don't come work out with me unless you want to be trained. Like, 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 yo, like, yo, you don't work out with me if I'm going to the park. Like, we go run. Yeah, yeah. yeah but if I'm in the gym, if, though. If I'm in the gym, I usually I'm by myself usually. I'm a solo. Because I, 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 I get more reps in. I, that's me. I'm, I like to get more reps in. I don't feel like it's because I get more reps in. I like to lift alone because it's like I don't get I don't be bothered. You don't when get I distracted. Go to, but when I go to lift, like I really have to lock in. Like like I'm in a certain headspace. And if somebody yep. talks to me and take me out that headspace, the lift won't be the same. Yeah. So I, I, if I lift with somebody, it's just I don't want to take that risk. Yeah, man. That, right, I lift by myself. So let's continue to get into it because I know you got to go soon, but we got like 17 more questions. Do you think we good? We good. So I know after college, you're going on to become a coach for your former high school and personal fitness trainer on the side as well. So first, let's talk about being a coach. What got you interested in wanting to become a coach? Long story short, bro, you know, I work in a restaurant, you know, K-Boy, the now varsity coach, he came in like, yo, you know, did you hear about Losher retiring? You know, my Losher, my senior year coach, I'm like, yeah, I heard. Uh, uh. He's like, he, he put his name in the bucket. I'm like, oh, I bet, bro. If you, if you get the job, let me know. I want to be your assistant. Oh, nice. I wanted to be the assistant. Wow. The assistant. So I'm like, all right, cool. He so he's like, I put, I tell him, uh, email the athletic director. Email the athletic director. I'm like, yo, what's up? I, I came in for an interview. I left the interview. I'm outside. I call my girl. I'm excited to talk. I'm talking about how I went. K boy yeah. comes out. He's like, yo, um. Let me talk to you real quick. I'm like, all right, what's up? Like, I didn't get the job. Like, I'm thinking like something went wrong because yep. he's not like smiling or nothing. So I'm like, damn, like, am I too young? Am I too fresh out of college? Like, I just graduated for like four months prior. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what's the word? He's like, yeah, bro. Like, he wants you to be the JV head coach. I'm like, oh, all right. Um, it's not really what I went in there for. Like, I yeah. at the time, I thought I wasn't ready for the responsibility. Yeah, because you like, have that experience. Exactly. Yet. Like, yeah. I never coached a team before. Like, I'd rather be the assistant. So you could learn, the watch, and all that you know what I'm stuff. saying? But yeah. I was just like, all right, you know, I'll, I'll do it. You know, just bite the bullet. Why not? Mm -hmm. So that's that's basically how I got started, and I love it. Hey, that's crazy. I love man. it. 
So how much does it mean to you to be the JV boys basketball coach at Rambo High School where you grew up and went from a boy to a man, but now years later, you get to lead young men and teach them valuable lessons and not just basketball, but about life? Bro, it means the world to me, bro. Like, my boys, the boys that I've taught in the last two years, like, I, I, I love each and every one of them mm -hmm. because each and every one of them can also teach me something about myself. There's yeah. something unique about each and every one of them that can help me better myself. Mm -hmm. And if I can help, if I can scratch your back and they scratch mine, that's yep. a healthy relationship. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like... Bettering each other. Exactly. If I yep. could influence the youth to be better than, even than I was, it's like, I feel like I'm doing something right. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to, what Drake say, influence a generation that's lacking in patience. Like, I really feel hey, like... that's a bar. That's a bar, bro. That's Drake, bro. That's Drake. Even got him in the studio. That's Drake, he that's, said he Drake, that's, Drake studio. that's Drake, yeah. that's Drake, that's Drake. I stole yeah. it, I stole it. Hey, but, uh, hey. I, nah. You remember out the dome though? Nah, it's a fact. Yeah. I'm a Drake fan, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like it feels so great, bro. Every time I come in, it's like, yo, I can give these boys something that, you know, somebody else may not be able to give them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And they all know, like, yo, like even if they, if I'm not coaching you no more, or you move to varsity, or you get cut, or even if you graduate and you come back, like my phone's always available, my door's always open. Like this is this is forever though. Like once you were Griffin, yeah. you locked in forever. Like we try to make this, we're trying to change the culture so they can understand like, yo, this this should be a family type thing. Yeah. And that's what I want to teach them, these, 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 these morals and values that I wish people were instilling in me more when I was that age. Yeah. Yo, that's respect, bro. Yeah. Respect, man. For real, for real. So you just finished your second season as the JV head coach. What lessons did you learn from your first season coaching that you're able to learn from? and be able to be better at it to become more efficient your second year now that you went and knew what to expect. The biggest thing I probably learned was that, like, and not every kid is different. You yeah. absolutely have to coach kids differently. Like, and there's yeah. some coaches that say, like, should everybody the same? And in certain aspects, like, in certain levels and parts of the game, yeah, you should. But there's other, part, there's other parts of the game where, like, you might have to communicate with this player differently. You might have to communicate with this athlete differently. Like, yep. everybody's different. Everybody and comes from a different backgrounds, exactly, different personalities, exactly. cultures. So, and that makes the, the job challenging for me because, you know, I'm a, I'm a blanket type of dude. Like, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm how I am. You go get you go get all these, how I'm trying to give it to you, and you, you have no choice. That's how I was raised. Yeah. So for me to kind of flip that switch and understand, like, yo, these kids are different than me. This kid is different than this kid. This kid is different than this kid. Like, you really got to give different kids different things for them to be successful. And I really feel like I did a better job this year than I did last year of doing that. Mm. So shout out to me. And shout out to you, man. <laughs> Killer care. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's the similarities and differences between being a player and a coach? Because you've seen both sides. You've done it. I have. I have. Similarities, emotions. Sure. I didn't think as a coach I would I would be as emotionally flustered as I was and I was as I was a player. Like, mm. like I would just assume that all coaches don't really be you don't know it until you're in that box. Exactly. There. You know what I'm saying? See. So like as I became a coach, I'm like, wow, like I really I feel myself getting emotional over certain stuff, like whether it's a bad ref call or maybe some of the attitudes the kids get towards progress. the game. Yeah, yeah. As, so a, as like, a basketball player and as men. Or lack of progress. And oh, I'm that, like, yep. why am I saying the same things I've been saying since game two? We're in game seventeen, like game yeah. sixteen. So it's like but then I realized like the emotional part of the game takes a toll on everybody. Like mm -hmm. we're the same in that aspect. In terms of like differences between like the coaches and the players, it's like One. more more often than not, the coaches want it more than the players. Yeah, and that's what sucks. Yeah, because like as a coach, it's like yo, I'm not on the floor with y'all. Like I can't I, control the outcome. I, of the I can game. only give y'all the tools. Yeah. Like if I was on the floor, we'd win every game. But it's yeah. like I'm. I wish they could understand that. Like yo, I literally can't want it more than you. Yeah, you have to want it the most in order for us to win. If if you want it more than me, we ain't gonna win no games. Yeah. I can't give you my fire within. Exactly. Not everybody you has gotta, it, but you got to want it. You got to light that match on the ass yourself. Yeah, it's you like a lot it. of kids, certain kids, some kids just can't do that as effectively or officially as some others. So yeah, that was that, that was something I definitely picked up quick. Hey, man. Hey, I, I can't imagine coaching, man. Just drawing up plays and all that. Oh, it's an experience, bro. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an I know experience. when you first said you're like, man, what do I put on this whiteboard? Sometimes. Especially, especially in crunch time situations. Bro, sometimes I was, bro, I'd be like, yo, like we we won by one. And you gotta do it quick too, because you only got like 30 seconds or a minute. We won by one against Clark Sound South. I'm just I'm in the timeout. Like you gotta know what you're doing. I'm like, yo, we need to get the ball up the floor. I'm like, yo, I need to draw something up quick. Like, but you know, it's yeah. cool because you got help. Like, I got, yeah. I have coaches. Assistant coaches. Like, yeah. I got guys, you know, Malik, you know, Coach Malik, yeah. shout out to him. He helps me out a lot. Coach hey, Malik, Barrington. trying to get you on the show, man. You'll get him soon, too. Yeah. You'll go get Coach Malik. Absolutely. I want, you, I want you to get in contact with my boy Barry, Coach Barry. He's mm -hmm. new to the program. He's phenomenal. Like, you know, yeah. Coach K always go give me the sauce when I need it. So, yep. you know, having those guys behind me, I, I always feel confident in the decisions we make yep. because they back me up. You know what I'm saying? Dope. I like that.
hey man, every successful person that you've ever seen, Jay Z, Michael Jordan, you don't get there by yourself. Yeah, you got a team. You got a team, bro. Yeah, I, I, LeBron, I absolutely couldn't do it without yeah. them. No matter how successful that whatever person you think in life, Michael Jackson, you don't get there by yourself. Mm -hmm. And this is facts. Mm -hmm. What are your ultimate goals for the Ramapo basketball program and how do you plan on helping them achieve it? A gold ball, a section one championship. Ooh. That and I want a couple thousand point scores. I mean, we need we need some more buckets in the Rampo. We need some people to be like, yo, Rampo's coming, watch out for that kid. But yeah. I did, we definitely want a section championship because you know, after the year I graduated, your senior year, we we went to the section, we went to the chip, we went to the big stage, and they lost. You know, I was there, I was at the game watching, and it was just like watching the community come together like that yeah. was something that I've never seen before. Crazy. And it's all because a varsity basketball team is playing well. Yep. Like you got Losha in the newspaper with the do rag on and yep. all the kids hyping them up. Like yep. that was cool for the community, bro. Like the school. This, I'm hearing the school aura was brighter. Like the kids are saying, kids are coming to school just with just more happy. Like the community's happy. I watched half of Spring Valley and Rockland County go to the uh, pace to watch that game against Mount Vernon, the chip game. And it's like, yo, like if I can get some kids to experience this again from Ramapo, I've 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 I feel like we've we've done the right thing. But like that's the ultimate goal, of course, the practical goal. Yeah. But like the small the small daily goals we try to get every day. We need to get these kids to be one percent better every day as men. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like we try to really express before to them, even the basketball player. Exactly. Like I express to them, me personally, I express to them all the time. Like, yo, I'm teaching life through basketball. Yeah. Like a lot of things that I teach you could be applied to yeah the basketball court, but take it in life too. Like, yeah. And I need them to understand that. Like, I, I just want you guys to become better men. The basketball thing comes second. The yeah. championship thing comes second. Yep. You know, because yep. we got a lot of men growing. We had a lot of boys growing up here, not becoming men, just becoming boys. There's a lot of yeah. immature emotional unintelligent yeah no work ethic type dudes that's no because goals. that's growing up no goals no yeah. ambition so it's like i just don't want this for for young men young men period but especially yeah. our young men you know yeah. what i'm saying kids that look like you. us I feel you on that man for real for real now that's really dope i, I would love to see you guys Yo, that would be great for the county everybody hey, everybody, everybody involved everybody. parents yep. kids young kids i remember that year they won the championship my senior year i was, I was at that game mm -hmm. supporting my boys anthony mm -hmm. marco all of them bro mm -hmm. i was at that game supporting them bro that was one of the greatest environments i've ever seen bro. ever bro even if they, even, they got of. clapped but even though yeah. like just, it was mount vernon yeah <laughs> having the almost the whole community behind us was great yeah. bro parking you couldn't even park the I'd car i've never seen rampo basketball like that not in my lifetime mm -mm. Mm -mm. How does it feel to be a leader of boys molding them into young men, even more so, especially at your alma mater? Especially at Ramapo. It's different when it's different from your former high school. Exactly. And, you know, every time I walk in that gym, they don't even notice. But, like, at the end of practice, I just walk out to the court and, like, I just be so thankful. Like, you know, like, I remember, I vividly remember the blood, sweat, and tears I put onto that floor. You know, a lot of scenarios replay in my head. Like, just stuff that I want them to go through and not go through. So, it's like, to be in that chair... You know, to be the JV coach, it's like, you know, to be the step under the varsity coach, it's like, yo, like, we really have a lot of control over how these boys act when they get out of school. Because from 742 to 156, you know, they're confined to the school. But when they get out, what do they want to do when they get out? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I have some influence on what they choose to do when they get out of school. So if yeah. I could be the best I can be at that, they could be better men. They could be better boys. And that's something I could appreciate. So that's, that's really... That's really what it means to me. Like every day, I'm I'm here at Ramapo. I see teachers that I've that taught me. They see me now become a man. They saw me when I was 13, 14, 15, yeah, that's crazy. 10 years ago. It's, it's and that's different. That's that, I love that. That's the beauty, yo. Like, oh, you're such a man now. You've grown up to be this nice young man, and it makes them feel like they did their yeah, job. Part, yep. Exactly, and they did. Like they did something right. Exactly. Like that's shout crazy. out to you guys. Like I'm part of the way I am is because of you. So if you're proud of me, be proud of yourself. And now you're trying to have that same impact on the next generation. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Hey, man. Big respect to you, for real. You know what I'm saying? Just keep the cycle going. You're also a personal trainer. How does it feel to be able to help impact people's lives for the better and to help get their health right, not only physically, but also mentally? Bro, that's, that's it's, it's, it's just as, as a rewarding feeling for the coaching thing, but this is more, more it's a little different because these are people's lives at stake now. This is people's yeah. physical health. Like, yeah. you know, like, I, like I gave the example, about my man, my, the example about my manager, it was just like, like I felt good after that. Like yeah. I got people texting me like, yo, I feel so good. Like yeah. I was, I was in this dark place. I wasn't, I wasn't getting out of bed. I wasn't doing nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm eating better. I'm drinking, I'm drinking more water. I'm getting my steps in. I'm more mobile. It's like, that's the, that's the best thing somebody can ever say to me. Like no compliment, no nothing can make me feel like, like better than that. Like that's the beauty. Like I'm 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 assisting and making you feel better about yourself. Like that's 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 pretty much 
the most important thing is self-esteem. Yep. If you have good self-esteem, if I can help you build that up, bro. Because no one, no one can have it for you. You got to have self-esteem in yourself first before anyone can have confidence Bingo. in you. So, Bingo. Yep. If you have self-esteem in yourself, you know what I'm saying? People are going to start viewing you a certain way already. Like if you are if you just don't feel like you're the shit, people are also going to feel like you're not the shit. Yep. Definitely. Straight like that. Now, you ready for some quick hitters, man? Come Got on, quick baby. hitters in the start bench cut. You some. ready? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me the good ones. <laughs> Give me the good ones. Quick hitters. What was your pivot? Meaning, what was the changing moment of your life, good or bad, that brought you along this journey or course of your life that you've been on and are going? Repeat the question. Repeat the question. Repeat the question. What was your pivot moment of your life, whether good or bad, that has brought you along this journey or slash course of your life that you've been on and are going? What was the changing moment in your life that you're like, oh, this brought you on this course that you've been on and are going? Pivot moment in my good, life. Good, good or bad? Pivot moment in my life. I got a, I got three. Can I give you three? Yeah, you give, yeah, give it three. Oh, three. I got to give you three. Yeah. I give you three. One, my freshman year, when I first met the athletic trainer at Ramapo, that's when I really got into the the therapeutic realm of, 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 of people, of their bodies and stuff like that. Like, it wasn't even really on some fitness stuff. I was really interested in healing people. I thought that was interesting. Mm. The second thing, um... Probably 2018 was probably the most pivotal point of my life. I was going through it bad. All the all the ones that know, know. Like, Damn. I was going through it bad. It was some friend stuff, relationship stuff, whatever the case may be. Yeah. Identity crisis stuff. Like, I feel you, bro. That was after the freshman year of college. That I'm was, out of high school. That was my, 2022. I, you know what I'm saying? You've yeah. been there. You've after been college there. And then so I've got to explain. Yeah. Like, it's just, that was just a real hard moment, bro. I I not know what was going on. Yeah. And the most pivotal, like, you know, recently, more recent, you know, I lost my man's. My boy Zach, you know what I mean? RP and my son Zach. So it's like uh when he passed, I really realized like, yo, how short life is. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, my boy Zach was such a dude who just he just went after it all the time. And whatever he wanted to do, he would say, okay, I'm about to do this, I'm about to do that. And he got it done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He was just that type of dude. So him dying like made me realize how life is short too. And yo, if, if there's something I want to do, I gotta do it. Yeah. You, and like hey, tomorrow's never promised. Exactly. Never so it's like it really made me feel like he really taught me, you know, with his passing, like how important execution is. How important execution is. So, you know, shout out to him, bro. I'm saying he doing his thing. He watching over me, making sure I'm good you know, money. He proud so, of you, man. Do you and your thing. Every day, not a day goes by. Not yep. a day goes by. I don't think about my man's, bro. But I feel you, man. He, he's, he's. That was, that was definitely a pivotal moment too. But it's those, those few things right there definitely help shape the man I am today. Those are probably my biggest battles. That's dope. Man. Other than the first one, that was positive, but yeah. that was a pivotal moment. That's dope, man. Yeah, everybody has those moments in life that change you, like whether good or bad, and mm -hmm. make you who you are today. Mm -hmm. Why is fitness so important to you? Fitness is important because I think two things. If you look good, you feel good. Yep. And I think that's important. Feeling good about yourself is important. You know, I like clothes I wear, how I how I how I dress and how I present myself is important. That's how I was raised to think. Like, you yep. know what I'm saying? I don't know if it's the the New York in me, or maybe it's my mom. My mom Harlem. always, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. maybe it's my mom. My mom always sent me to school. Like, if I ever pick my own outfit and she ain't like it, she'd be like, you can't be out here looking raggedy. Like, yeah. that was her thing. Yeah. So it's like, I'm like, all right, like, if I get brolic, if I look nice, like, I don't look raggedy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So that's that, that's a big role. And also, I like to be an example for others. Yep. You know, and I've learned recently how the dim can be an outlet, you know, from for your mental. You know how to go. Help me after the breakup. Okay. Exactly. When you when you, and everybody okay. when they break up, what's the first thing they want to do? Get in the gym. Get right. right. If they do it the right way. Right. Whether yeah. it's for superficial reasons, you still in yeah. there. So it's like that's the right way to do it to relieve stress, not mm -hmm. the dark way, which mm -hmm. is alcohol and all that. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like if I'm a transfer, if I'm gonna have all this energy, I'm gonna transfer it the right way. So fitness is important because it's just it's always there. Mm -hmm. It's always there. There's, and there's so many different realms of exercise. Like people think, like, oh, I have to go be this meathead in the gym. I'm like, yeah. bro, you know, you yeah. don't. You don't have to lift weights like me. You just yeah. find whatever works for you. Like yeah. lifting and everybody's different. Fitness is so subjective. And I just want to teach people, like, yo, like you don't have to be a bodybuilder. And most bodybuilders yeah. aren't even healthy. Yeah. You don't have to be a, this this meathead in the gym to be this healthy individual. Like, like I that's teach me, for example. I don't care about being bodybuilder. Right. I just like to look good. Exactly. That's it. Exactly. Whatever that that means to you, you know what I mean. Rock with it. So it's yeah. like it's weird to teach people people to do their own thing like fitness is important because i can teach different things not just how to have a better looking body like i could teach other people different things i could teach you about your body yeah. i could teach you you like you'll learn different things about confidence you'll learn uh simple things like like um um like gradual progression like you don't gotta yeah. like you don't gotta have everything you want right then sometimes you gotta lock in 
waste some time and you'll get yeah. what you need to get out of it. Like, yeah, I was fit Delayed before. gratification. That's yeah, what I was looking delayed for. Delayed gratification. Yeah. You're not going to get instant results. So you got to have patience. And that goes with anything yeah, in life. Anything in life, yeah. So if I'm teaching you about your body, but you're learning these other parts about your life, it's like, I'm, I'm, you're not even, you don't even understand all the value that I'm giving you. What's like, you think I'm just. Goes? Good things come to those who wait. Exactly. Exactly. And they don't even understand the extra stuff I'm giving them just by training their body. Yeah. You drop, you dropping them gems. You know what I'm saying? I try yeah. my best, bro. Hey. Straight off the top. I, I know I know I'm fit, but maybe I can ask you for some gems too. Yeah, bro. I, yeah. I got you, bro. Yeah. Whatever you need. I'm Think sure you so. can teach me something too. I don't act like yeah. I know it all. Yeah. I'm very I'm open to way. information. Bro, I, I don't reach a point I've reached with this and all everything I've accomplished mm -hmm. if I was like ego. Even at the gym, people see I'm fit, but I'm I'm always listening to older guys. Because mm -hmm. they help me with some exercise I never thought of. Ever since I've been I've been in that gym now for a year and a half. I always ask them, oh, what's this? Or they say, oh, let me show you this workout. I'm, I'm open-minded. Hell yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, bro. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm one of those young kids. Oh, yeah. I, I, hey, don't help me. I, I got, nah. Stupid. I've never been, I've never been like that. I mean, like, I've always been open-minded to advice since I was little. Mm -hmm. As you should be, because like stupid that. people don't ask questions. Yeah. The smartest people ask questions. You learn from older people, that's how you get wiser. And like fitness is such a gray area type thing. Like a lot of yeah. things aren't black and white for this fitness stuff. So yep. you got to understand nuance. Yep. Favorite hobbies outside of coaching and fitness? Favorite hobbies outside of coaching and fitness? Hooping. Does that count? Yeah. Yeah, we can say that. Uh, yeah, 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 hooping. Yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy yeah. basketball. If I'm going to say yeah. hobbies, like, damn, bro. Do you like I listen I'm, to music? Do you like to draw? Yeah, I like to listen like to that. music. You know, I be chilling a lot. I like to link the homies. I like to yeah. keep a simple life, bro. I, I like to eat. That's yeah. another thing I like to eat. I'm, yeah. I'm a sucker hey, to going bro, out to when eat. you exercise, you got to eat, bro. You get hungry. I'm about to go out to eat right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I like hungry. To, I love to eat, bro. I, I just, I like to, I like to be around love. That's my thing. So whatever mm -hmm. I love doing or whoever I love, I like to be around that. Yep. Amen. Amen. Simple, bro. Amen. Simple life. Favorite food and pre-workout meal? Pre-workout meal? See, that's the thing, though. I don't eat before I uh, work out. Or oh, a post-workout meal. Oh, see, now we're getting somewhere. Yeah. All right. All <laughs> right. Like, what was the first one you said? Favorite meal? Favorite food and post-workout meal. Since Favorite food, just period? Eat. Yeah. Bro, I eat a lot of chicken, bro. I'm not going to lie. Chicken, I'm your typical chicken. Negro, bro. I eat a lot of chicken. <laughs> Now I'm going to sit here and lie to you. So, I mean, chicken is any type of chicken. It could be fried, grilled, yeah. baked. I don't give a damn. I'm going to eat it, grilled bro. Grilled is healthy and baked. Yeah. yeah. So, it's yeah. like any type of chicken I like. But if I'm going to not say chicken, I'm going to go French fries because everybody like fries. That's my guilty pleasure. Good Even fries. if I'm dieting, Good I'm going to still eat me some French yeah. fries. If I'm cutting a little bit, I'm going to yeah. still have some French, French fries. fries. Yep. I'm going to still have some <laughs> French fries. Bro. French fries, especially when it's crispy and warm. Boy, with the, season, with the crisp, with the seasoned oh, salt on it, bro. Stop oh, playing. tell me about it, bro. What's your favorite fries from where? Fry, ah, damn. damn. It's some good places, bro. It really is. Favorite fry, not Mickey's, not Wendy's, definitely not Burger King. Five guys. and I. Okay. But that's the thing, though. I don't eat burgers. I haven't had a burger in 20 years. You know, burger, no, I don't eat burgers. Bro, but I, I will dead burgers. ass go to Five Guys just for a sack of fries. Pause. I love, bro, I love cheeseburgers. Nah, I can't see it, bro. I can't do it. <laughs> and crazy. I feel like if I had one today, I might like it. Yeah. But nah. But favorite post-workout meal? I've been loving a burrito lately, bro. Okay. It's a fat burrito, extra, yeah. extra You're chicken. You're really hungry after a workout, so you need something. That's that's, yeah, you need something fat. that's going to fill you up. Like a burrito. Top five music artists of all time. Oh, my God. Yes, this is what I, <laughs> yeah. this is what I like. My top five music artists of all time. You don't time. have to put it in order, cause yeah. my top five though. Yeah, me, your personal, not top the five. best top five, but my favorite your, yeah, five. Your top five. My favorite five. Oh, so this question isn't that hard. Drake is number one. That's number one. That's the only thing I'm putting in order. Is Drake at number one. I'm a Drake fan. I love Drake too. So after Drake, Drake. I'm gonna go Mary J. Blige. Ooh, legend. I'm gonna go. It's tough. It's a lot. I'm gonna go. You got Kendrick, you got J. Cole, you got all these people. I, you got I know. Lil Wayne, I know. You got, you know, I, know. You got I can say Wheezy. I'm going to say Wheezy. Yes, sir. I'm going to say Wheezy. You got Ye. You got I'm all a, these I'm a Wheezy fan. I'm going to say Kanye. I That's love four, Kanye. right? Kanye's in my top five. I'm going to say Kanye. That fifth spot is tricky because there's a lot of guys that I really like. Like, I really like A Boogie and I really yeah. like Tory Lanez. Bro. But it's like, if I'm not going to pick, and I really like, I'm going to go Biggie. Biggie? I'm gonna go Biggie. Ooh, Four of those five people are in my top five. No way. Who's not? Who's the one that wasn't? Mary See, it's funny, my dog. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. It's crazy, bro. And then my fifth one probably Kendrick. That's a good pick, bro. Kendrick, Kendrick is like bro, number six. Kendrick seven. got me through some time. Kendrick bro. is him, bro. I first heard of him. We were in middle school. What's the first Kendrick song you heard? Oh, which one was it, man? Poetic Justin and Money Trees. 
Ooh, money trees. When I'm in the, when I'm in, bro, I be we're always cranking that in the gym, bro. That's it a make good me pick. go, man. It makes me get in that go mode, That's man. That's a good pick. Back when the soldier mode be activated. Money trees make the perfect thing to say. That's the sad feel. Nah, oh my God. Yo, that, that be getting me going, bro. Rigor Mortis was the first Kendrick song I heard. It was, mm. I love Kedrick ever since. Good Kid, Mass City. That album is legendary. That's a classic. Forever. That's a ever, classic. Bro. And I came out, you were eighth grade, I was in seventh grade. Yep. Pomona time. That was getting played everywhere. That was like when, when Kendrick first got high, Drake first got high, he dropped Take yeah. Care not too long ago and Think yeah. Me Later. Yeah. That was good. That was and, good and time. And then 2013 for music. that year, he dropped Nothing Was the Same Drake. And then 2014, J. Crazy. Cole dropped 2014, Harold Force dropped. Our generation was, it was like, good year for yo, music, high bro. School, high school, middle school, or go to the years. Good bro. year for music. Fetty Wap came on the scene. No, Lil Wayne was still dropping crazy stuff. Lil yeah, Uzi came. Oh, man. That was a good time for music. Top five NBA players of all time. My like, favorite yeah. or the, the the top five? Let's go the top five. The Nobody top cares five. about my favorite. Yeah. Fuck that. The top five. This isn't even a hard list. LeBron. Mm -hmm. That's not hard. Jordan. Mm -hmm. Kobe. Because I don't know when the argument became Kareem and Bill Russell. And I don't give a fuck about none of that, bro. And all, all hoopers know. All hoopers know. The argument has always been LeBron, Jordan, Kobe. I don't know what the hell other people be talking about. It's always mm -hmm. LeBron, Jordan, Kobe. LeBron, Jordan, Kobe. And then for the four and fifth spot, Shaq. Because, mm. like, come on, that's Diesel, bro. He's the most dominant yeah, he's, player he's ever. Beast. He's a beast. For that fifth spot, bro, I would ah, see that. Magic got Bird, you got Tim Duncan, got Hakeem. Ah, I'm, I'm a sleeper on Magic. Not Larry Bird, not Magic, not nobody from the 80s, bro. Other than Jordan, nobody from the '80s. So I'll probably go somebody you like. Well, you got. Well, if I'm gonna Steph say somebody, Curry, if I'm gonna say somebody who's old, I'm gonna go Kareem. Mm. I'm gonna go Kareem, cause Kareem's tough, bro. We have the same top five, except I have Magic instead of Shaq. See, nah, I just can't see that, bro. Yeah. I just can't see that. Magic, bro, as a rookie, won Finals MVP, came in Kareem's place in Game Six in the Finals. As yeah, a but, rookie, but, but he's playing against Tom, Dick, and Harry, like, bro, Julius Irvin, Hall of Famer. But bro, come on, Did, bro. The I've I, I been watching you, these games. I know Jones? you be seeing the. I know you be bro. seeing the '90s is dead. And shit. then in the '80s, one of the greatest eras of all time, he won. Five of those rings, bro. Bro, that first of all, that wasn't even like one of the greatest eras of all time. All those guys sucked. Charles all those Barkley, guys sucked. Michael Jordan, if you weren't, Thomas. If you weren't a, 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 a unicorn in the league like those guys, you were a mailman or a plumber. You were a regular dude. And I'm not saying it's the greatest era ever. I be watching those like those I think games. today's era is the best. I be watching those The talent-wise, today's era is the best. Yeah, of course. The 2000s were crazy, too. Yes, I agree. Yeah. So it's like magic, bro. If you really watch magic highlights and Shaq highlights, who you going to say is the better player? Imagine got the passing though, though. He's the greatest passer I've ever seen. Like the flair. In Everything. terms of flashiness. But, but Shaq got the body. Who has the most Duncan assists ever? John, John Stockton. Stockton. Cause his career got cut short by HIV. That's I mean, fair. That's yeah. fair. That's fair. Let's be real. If he didn't get cut, he's the all time assistant. If, he didn't if get not sick, for HIV, let's if he be didn't real. Get sick, you might be right. And he has three MVPs, three finals MVPs. So maybe that's game, what it is. And he changed the game. He saved it. He literally, him and Bert saved it. Bro, there's probably no Michael Jordan on that. They don't save them. Maybe it was on tape delay, bro. No, you're right. The finals weren't on tape delay. You're like, right. They weren't even playing. That's crazy how far the leagues come. Mm -hmm. Thanks to those two. They saved it. And Michael Jordan took it to another level. Then Kobe, LeBron took it to another level. Michael Jordan oh, became worldwide, bro. He, at, yeah. at the time, he was probably the, the biggest person in the world. And that goes to my next question. Who's your NBA GOAT? LeBron. I didn't have to think yeah. about it. Yep. LeBron James. I don't for the older guys, yo, yeah. bro, it's not even the Bro, I always I always look like I'm like, man, LeBron or Jordan. And then Kareem's in that. It's like, oh man. Those LeBron. are my top three, by the way. Kobe's fourth. All hoopers know. Yeah. All hoopers, real hoopers. It's LeBron, bro. The level of comp. 40,000. Shout out LeBron, bro. man. 40K? I never thought I'd see someone do that. LeBron, bro. how can you say the person that does it all isn't better than the person who who's the one trick pony? Like Jordan was a bucket. A hundred percent. You can't deny that. He was a great defender too. No, he wasn't. <laughs> if, he were, if we were gonna say, the oh, defense, Scottie Pippen, the defensive Scottie rule, Pippen. the defensive rules were different back then. Yeah, one, two, and yeah. nobody. Who was he guarding? Like nobody. Yeah. He didn't have to guard. Michael Jordan didn't have to guard Steph Curry. He didn't have to guard Kobe in his prime. Like really. he didn't have to guard or, these okay. guys, bro. Yeah. Or D Wade Come or on, Tracy Brady in the prime. Yeah, he didn't have to LeBron, guard these guys. That's why I had I had this uh, conversation with my friend the other day. That Le LeBron, he's played. Low, if you really think about it, he's low key played more comp than Jordan did. Low key, high like, he key. played three, four different generation of greats, and he played the best team in, in NBA history, history. and Kevin won. Durant, yep, and won. Yeah. No, the, the oh no, oh, no okay, oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's and won. Yeah. He came back from yeah. game one and won. He would have won more rings if KD didn't go to the Warriors, bro. We would have spanked, and Kyrie yeah. would have stayed. Yeah, if KD didn't go to the Warriors and they won that chip yeah. in 2016 and 17, Kyrie would have stayed. and They would have three peated. 
Yeah, Cleveland would have been a city of champions. Or, or if Kyrie didn't get hurt in 2015. Right. And, right. and they would have won the first year. They would have yeah, won the first bro, time. It's crazy. So it's crazy. Like, There's so many hypotheticals in bro, sports, bro. It's crazy. It's LeBron, bro. It's LeBron. LeBron. We'll never see a better all around player than LeBron. I'm sorry. No. Never. No. Never. Never. No. And the fact he's so athletic and strong at that size and have that durability is crazy. And he had so crazy. much pressure on him from the jump. Bro. And he exceeded it. Exactly. That's why people hate on him. I'm like, bro, I I'm sorry, bro. You like, he was supposed the man. to be. Yeah. They had a Nike deal at 18. Yeah. That's crazy. $100 million a life, before a lifetime, entering a step on the court in the league, bro. A lifetime a deal with Nike as a teenager. As a teenager. Come on, bro. And he exceeded all the hype. It's LeBron. And look what he became. It's LeBron. And he's opening schools up for kids and all that, bro. It's LeBron. It's crazy, bro. Love Mike, but it's LeBron. Ready for start bench cut? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Jordan, Kobe, LeBron. Start bench cut. Who you, are you starting? Who you benching? Who you People are going to hate my answer. <laughs> People are gonna hate my answer. I'm putting him on the spot. Yeah, yeah ladies and gentlemen. Listen, I want everybody to hear me loud and clear because I'm, I'm gonna post this clip on my Instagram. I want everybody to hear this loud and clear, bro. <laughs> Start bench cut LeBron, Kobe, Mike. And I want the drama in my DMs. I want the drama. <laughs> I'm starting LeBron James. He's LeBron James. He's gonna do everything that I ask him to do on both ends of the floor. I'm benching Kobe Bryant. He's a two way player. He's a better defender than Michael Jordan was. And plus, they're the same offensive player. So it doesn't really matter who you cut there. Yeah. So really, it's like, who are you keeping on D? Who's the better defender? Kobe. And come on, mama mentality, I'll take that over Jordan's psychoticness. <laughs> and I'm cutting Jordan, bro. Just like when you got cut in high school, I'm cutting you, Jordan. I'm <laughs> done, nigga. Done. Yo, What's wrong with him? He said, I'm cutting you like they cut you He's in done, high school, bro. bro. Cut like they cut you in high school. Yo, that's crazy, bro. Cut they, him. Lenny Buccaneer High School. <laughs> that's it, bro. He's done. Pack him up. Yo, he said Jordan's psychotic mentality like Kobe was. <laughs> Kobe was crazy, too. But yeah. Jordan, was, well, Jordan was sick, too, bro. But oh, man. Kobe was like... Jordan, Jordan and Kobe's uh, mentalities were crazy. Yeah. Yeah. That's what made them the players they were, for sure. Star bench cut. Drake, Lil Wayne, Kendrick. I got, so I told you, I got good ones, man. It's my first time doing this segment, too. Drake, Lil Wayne, Kendrick. I'm starting Drake. That's not even a question. Mm -hmm. That's where it really comes now. Who by benching Wayne or Kendrick? Mm -hmm. That means if you cut it them, that means you're getting rid of them all and all music. their work. All the work they've ever done. It's crazy. Yep. Those are two. These are all cultural icons, so it's like hard. <laughs> Got you really thinking. See, I, now. I, 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 didn't, I put Weezy in my top five, but not Kendrick. So you would say I would bench. Yeah. But I think Weezy, like I like Weezy, but I like Kendrick's music more Kendrick than Weezy. Like I, think, I think Kendrick be hitting the soul. I think bro. Kendrick's. I think Kendrick's music is better than Weezy's. Think so. But like, I be thinking like Wayne could just rap his ass off. Like, yeah. But I, I wouldn't like, want to get in a rap battle against any of them. If I'm anybody, I would not want to go against them. Their lyrics, their lyricists. I wouldn't want to go against this, Wayne. I'd yeah. go against Kendrick and Drake. Okay. Like if I was a rapper. Lil Wayne will roast you. <laughs> Lil Wayne will roast anybody. I'm benching Kendrick. I'm cutting Wayne. Oh, that hurt. Damn. That hurt. <laughs> oh. You think that hurt? Uh, let's get to the next one. Start, start bench cut. Your girl, fitness, or coaching? Ooh. <laughs> Shorty's not going to like this one. Uh, Veronica, you're on the hot spot. She's not going to like this one. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Come on, bro. Shorty's starting 100%. Uh -huh. she, she's the starter. She's always hey, a star. That's what's up. I'm benching. I'm not that selfish, bro. So I'm I'm benching coaching because I, 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 influencing the youth is way important than myself. Yeah. So then I'm going to have to say I'm cutting fitness. Oh, damn. That's damn, that's really saying something, something coming from a fitness beast like you, man. Yeah, bro. Yes. <laughs> you have your I, head I, down I, like, damn, that hurt. Yeah, bro. I'll be yeah. a fat slob coaching, <laughs> coaching kids. Last one for start bench cut. Denzel, Samuel and L. Jackson, or Ice Cube? I'm starting Denzel. Yeah, he's a goat. He, Come on. He's a goat. He's a goat. He's been in so many. I'm starting rooms. Denzel. If you keep get, it Ice Cube, bro. I need the Fridays, bro. I'm, be yeah, nah, I'm benching I'm Ice say, Cube. If you cut Ice Cube, there's no Friday. Nah, there's yeah, no, nah, nah, yeah. That, I'm benching Ice Cube, and I'm cutting Samuel L. I can do without him in the MCU films anyway. No, so. no, Coach Carter. No, yeah. Coach Carter's cool, bro, but Friday? Come on. Yeah, Friday. All Damn. about the Benjamins? Come on, bro. <laughs> like, they, 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 it was like, Damn. When Debo come around, yeah. I'll be quiet. <laughs> but when he leave, I'll be talking again. Yo, you sound... <laughs> <laughs> you sound just like yo. You sound just like that the guy. shit. Bye, Felicia. Yeah. All right, so we got four more left. Lock in. How would someone describe Cameron Vaughn? How would someone describe me, bro? Charismatic. I like to say that's, that's one I get a lot, especially mm -hmm. being a waiter. You know, charismatic. Mm -hmm. Charm is always cool. So yeah, I'm gonna go charismatic. Damn, we get the same compliments, man. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? Yeah. You probably don't get this one too much though. Handsome. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he, are you trying to violate? I'm <laughs> <laughs> 
Nah, nah, let me not be like that. I'm going to go charismatic, funny. I think I'm funny, bro. I be trying yeah. to tell people I'm funny. I'm funny, bro. Contrary yeah. to popular belief. <laughs> um, and um, supportive. There, you know what I'm saying? I'll be there for the homies, bro. Like, yep. somebody needs some, you know, I'm, I'm the homie, everybody know. Like, I'm going to yeah. give you the check. I'm going to call you like, yo, what's up? Can check in. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. What's up with your mental? It don't even got to be every day. It's like once in a while. Once in a while. Yeah, 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 I, once you get to a certain age, everybody's busy, you know, got jobs and stuff, trying to get to the careers and all that. So, nice. like, once you get older, you start realizing, you start like understanding it better. 100%, bro. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that my friends and people around me come to me for, you know, different perspectives because they feel like I can offer them that. You know, yeah. and I, I appreciate that. I, I enjoy that. Nah, that's dope, man. What are your goals in life? My goals in life are my ultimate goal is to have a beautiful family that I'm very fond of and I can take care of, that I can have the blessing to take care of. Um, I want to open up my own gym. That's mm -hmm. also another thing, to definitely um, open up my own gym, have that being a thing. And um, continuing whatever realm of fitness I'm in, continuing a realm of fitness so I can in in improve on you know, changing people's lives, on, no matter what level it is, whether I could be a collegiate strength and conditioning coach if i'm a trainer or if i'm working in a facility like whatever the case may be as long as i can continue to help people that's all i could ask for bro that's amazing i don't like i don't want to yeah i'm not gonna ask for too much bro i just i just want the simple things i'm a very simple dude like i said yeah. in the beginning like i just want the simple things in life and enjoy the fruits of my labor by helping the people that i love that's what's up who do you want to see on the dj sports show but you have to help me get them on the show who do I want There's to see? There's a few guys you you were cool with that. I would love to. Who do I want to see? I'm gonna name you a few guys. I want to see um Johnson. I would love to see you get What's K Boy on here. K Boy. Varsity coach. Uh Devin Lawson, another trainer I know. I have him on Facebook. I think yeah. I think Devin Lawson can definitely give a lot of insight. Very smart dude. Um Chauncey. You want I think Chauncey, told my boy Chauncey, I could definitely help you get him on here. I, I've been trying to get Marcellus on he's too. Fresh for time. Marcellus in the yeah, uh, in the G League, bro. Yeah, he got bro, time. Marcellus is busy, yo. You know how many times busy. he said he want to come on the show too? I'm like, yo, you trying to make it happen. You can get hard. Marcellus out here, bro. That'd be beautiful. Yeah. Um yeah. I'm trying to think of somebody It don't even have to be just ball players, it could be athletes. I'm about to say anybody. somebody who coaches in the community. Um Jess. Jess Biggs. She coaches over at Nan Uet. Mm -hmm. uh, she coaches the JV basketball team. Uh, I think she's a phenomenal coach. She coached me when I was with the Monarchs. She was an oh, assistant wow. on the JR. Um, I think she can give you a lot of insight on this show. Um, hey, yeah, you got you to you help gonna, me get these people I'm going to give man. you, um, you know, Rob Tudin. Rob Tudin, oh, no, He used to play him. for um, Nanuet. I think he'll, he can be a good aspect. He also, he's a phenomenal basketball player, phenomenal athlete. He okay. played over upstate at Utica. Yeah. Yeah, so um, he's good for you. Yeah. And if I'm going to give you one more... I'm gonna give you one more. I think you should put up. I think you should bring up. I don't know. I don't have a specific name in my a specific name in my head, but I think you should bring up a high school varsity athlete in the area that's playing well. Mm, okay. Just to get the perspective from uh, uh, a high school player that's still active and yeah. he's out here or she is out here doing their thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think that'll be. I think that'll be interesting. I don't think I've done a high school athlete yet while they're in high school. Wait, say it again. I don't. I haven't done a high school athlete right, yet while they're in high school. I've done. I've done people in college and talk about their high school careers while mm -hmm. they're in college and stuff, or playing professional or whatever. But I never done them while in high school yet. So mm -hmm. that's a that's a good one. That's, I think that'll yeah. be really good, bro. Especially I think it'll bring some some light to the high school basketball scene in Rockland County, which mm -hmm. has been kind of dead lately. So it's like yeah. I feel like that. Well, kind of needs, needs, needs a spark. Right. Needs right. Spark. Other than you know, North Rockland just won the championship last year, so that was good yeah. for the for them and the community that they that they reside in. So yeah, my high school been balling. Maybe if you can bring years. somebody who yeah. was on that championship team or. Or whatever the case may be, whoever's in the newspaper that month, or yeah. I think that'll be cool. Yo, Chauncey Marcellus, I know you two. I've seen, I met both of you two in person before. Y'all, y'all there? Trying to get y'all on the it's show. Here, bro. Stop Especially you, Marcellus. Here. I've been heating you up multiple times through the years. I, and you even said you're trying to get on the show, so. Bro, stop playing with my mans, bro. Yo, you about to get me I know you're busy, but you got to make it happen, man. Let's make it happen. Final question, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When people think of the name Cameron Vaughn. What do you want your legacy to be? I help people. Mm. You know what I'm saying I, I want people to know that I, I help people, and 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 if I if I, if I love you, or even if I don't love you, you could be a stranger, but I'm all, I'm always willing to help. Like if, if there's knowledge I can give, if there's something that you that you that you can get from me, I'll, I'm always willing to give it. I just want people to understand when I when I go and I kick the bucket, I'm six feet under. Like yo, Cam was there for me when I needed him. Cam was there for me. He supported me when 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 I was going through this and when I got this job or when I got the, when this happened to me. Cam, he definitely helped me out. He was he was that dude. Like I just want to be remembered as a dude that helped change people's lives. That's that's all I can ask for.
Man, uh, hey, that was that was a great way to close it out, man. I said, bro, great way to close it out. You a closer? I said, bro, real closer, simple, man. real simple, real it's simple. Yo, Rich Paul to sign you and say, clutch. Hell yeah, sign me. I can't pay him no. Sign can't you, pay man. him no. Well, ladies and gentlemen, man, this has been a great interview with my guy, Killer Cam, man. My dog. Killer Cam, bro. Pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. Of coming course, here. of course. And also, I know you have a dinner reservation to get to. Mm -hmm. so time to grow there. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, this has been a DJ Sports Show with my guy, Killer Cam. And make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. Share with anybody you know love sports. And I'll see you next time. Peace. DM me for online coaching. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah.